again, everyone, and Steve Beverly with you, along with Coach Mark Campbell, as we preview another edition of Union University Basketball, and it's one of the elite programs in the Gulf South Conference, Delta State, that invades Fred DeLay Gymnasium this evening. And Mark, good to have you with us once again. Before we get into Delta State, let's talk about Monday night. This is one of those weeks that because of making up a postponed game on Monday night, it's like the old NAI days of a Monday, Thursday, Saturday schedule. But uh, you came away with another victory, 66 to 56, down in Huntsville on Monday night. Uh, give us the lowdown on that game for people who didn't get a chance to watch it online. What was your takeaway from it? Uh, it, it was ugly. Uh, I think that uh, we've had, I think we've had two games in uh, 19 days, something like that. And so uh, you can expect it to be that way a little bit offensively. I think we're getting a little bit better defensively, even though we didn't defend very well in the third quarter. Uh, but we just need to be playing games. And so getting three in this week will get us back in a rhythm, I think. And, uh, against, you know, three different teams that play three different styles. So uh, it's going to get us trying trying to get back into some sort of rhythm that we were in before we had our week off. You had a, a big night from Shanique Lucas, who really put together some important points and uh, managed to do a lot without the basketball during the course of that game to preserve that victory, 66 to 56. Uh Give us from your vantage point again, because we haven't talked a lot about individual players, but what she brings to the table. Uh, You know, I've been doing this a long time. I'm not sure that we've had anybody uh, at her position this talented. Uh, She's just a sophomore, which is hard to believe. Uh, And this year she's had to kind of, she didn't have the ball in her hands as much as she did last year because we wanted the ball in her hands or Jay's hands last year most of the year. And we just added some other pieces this year and, I think we share the ball a little bit better than we did last year. Uh, and uh, it's put her where she's not at the one as much. And so balls out of her hand, she's getting less shot attempts, but still very efficient, shooting over 50% from the field and over the 80, over 80% from the free throw line. So she does a lot of other things. I think probably sometimes I get in her way a little bit um, because uh, she frustrates me. And at the same time, she frustrates me because I just know how what a great player she is. We're really fortunate to be able to have her for a couple more years after this. Yeah, I had the opportunity to meet her dad when he was here on a day that we ended up having a postponed game, so he didn't get to to see her play, but comes from such a great family. Uh, let's talk about who's in here tonight, Delta State. This is not from a one-loss record, uh, anywhere close to one of their best teams, but yet if you look at their performance, and I've had a chance to really peruse their statistics up and down uh the ledger. Uh, This is a ball club that is very capable of coming in here and making a huge, huge difference. Uh, Tell us about Delta State, this version. Well, uh, I think every time Craig has a team uh, that he doesn't, he's not a guy that does a lot of complicated things. He just does what he does very well. And uh, they have uh, a couple of transfers from that are new to this year's team that are very good players. They're efficient players. Um, they have a very good post player. It's one of the top post players in our league. They have a very good shooter in Hicks that's um, pretty consistent. She's always pretty consistent against us. Uh, you know, they're, they're athletic enough to be able to defend us at every position. And you can expect uh, his teams to come in ready to play. And so that's what I love about the Gulf South is that every team is different. They're going to be playing a Princeton team on Monday, play a slow down, a really physical game on Thursday. And we're going to play against a team that presses on Saturday in Mississippi College. And so every team gets us mentally prepared to be able to adjust from night in to night out, be able to uh, not worry about pace of play. We need to be able to play fast. We need to be able to play slow. We need to be able to play against zones. We need to be able to play against man. We need to be able to play against people who hedge ball screens and play under ball screens and switch ball screens and be able to make those adjustments on the fly without a timeout. And so – I think all these teams prepare us to be our very best. And so look forward to the challenge uh, uh, against Delta tonight. Let's talk about keys to the game from your vantage point for the Lady Bulldogs. What are the big keys in being able to overcome what Delta State is going to throw at you? Yeah, I think points in the paint. I think at the end of the day, um, uh, who gets the foul line the most? Points in the paint. Uh, obviously, all the time, be able to win that 
offensive rebounding battle. We've done a really good job the last five games uh, points in the paint. I think uh, our one game that we we want to give up, we want to give up 22 or less per game points in the paint. That means anytime a second shot, a second a second chance point is a point in the paint, a, a post feed, a, a back door, um, any of the things that where somebody can get in the middle of the lane and score. Uh, if we can keep people at 22 or under, we're going to do a really good job. We've had one game, that's our last game, at 24 uh, points uh, that we've kept people under under that number. And and it allows us to win games based on defense because our offense has not been very good over the last month. Well, Mark, as we always say, we wish you a lot of good luck out onto the court tonight. You're continuing to try to preserve this unbeaten string in the conference and a, a chance to get closer to sewing up the number one seed in the conference tournament. But uh, we'll be talking to you during the course of the game, and uh, we'll be looking to see a lot of good things happen on the court tonight, Mark. Thanks, Steve. And we will be going down to the floor right now and bringing you tonight's starting lineups for Union against Delta State. And let's bring you these starters for tonight's game. Coach Craig Roden's Lady Statesman. You'll see Kavanche Stackhouse. She is from West Helena, Arkansas. She is extremely hard to guard. Mariah Hurst. She is a freshman from Magnolia, Mississippi. Mackenzie Hill is a guard from Hazel Green, Alabama, another freshman. Zaire Ewing. She is a senior from Natchez, Mississippi. And... Takira Hicks is not going to be in the lineup tonight, unfortunately, and we send our condolences to her and her family. She lost her grandmother, and so she'll be replaced in the lineup by Chanel Kitchens, who's another transfer from Mississippi College. Let's look at you Lady Bulldogs. They are going to be the same group of five that we mostly have seen for the season. Shanique Lucas, Ashton Baker, Jalencia Williams, Bethany Dillard, Emily Dunnigan. Ashton, of course, has been huge on the floor as a floor leader. Jalencia, the leading scorer, 15 point two per game. Shanique had 18 points in Monday night's victory against Alabama and Huntsville. And so that's who is going to be opening on the floor tonight. And it's about time for us to go down to the floor for the invocation and our national anthem. <laughs>
And now, the next starting lineups being considered for Lady Casey and Delta State University. At guard, a 5 eight senior from West Carolina, Arkansas, number two, Kamashe Stackhouse. At forward, a 5'9 graduate student from Randall, Mississippi, number four, Ryan Hurst. At guard, a 5'8 freshman from Eastern Green, Alabama, number 10, Mackenzie Hill. At forward, a 6'1 senior from Natchez, Mississippi, number 11, Zaire Yu. And at guard, a 5'6 junior from Jackson, Mississippi, number 13, Chanel Tichens. The ladies' game is going to approach by Kirk Rowe, as it's by Chelsea Rowe, and then Nisha Chad. It is always a good one when these two get together. Delta State coming in 10 and 9 and 8 and 6 in the Gulf South Conference. Union 17 and 2, undefeated in 12 conference matchups. Lady Bulldogs are getting closer and closer to trying to sew up that number one seed in the conference. They have a one game lead over Valdosta State, a game and a half, actually a two game lead over Lee. There's a lot of basketball still to be played in these final three weeks of the season before we hit March 1st in the Gulf South Conference Tournament. It is Williams who will be jumping it with Ewing. And Union gets the tap. Lady Bulldogs took the victory on the floor of Delta State earlier in the season. It was 77-63. to 63. I can tell you, Craig Roden, second time around, he always has something in store and particularly always a solid defensive team. Union with only five on the shot clock, and they're going to have to hurry. Ashton's going to have to put up a desperation shot that just had no authority on it whatsoever. Had that gone through, it would have been probably a modern wash day miracle. <laughs> This is a team that is not going to score up in the 70s or 80s as usual. They don't shoot a lot of threes. They are only averaging 32% from behind the arc. And there is Bethany Dillard, and it went left. Bethany tells us that she can tell almost the minute it leaves her hand if it is on the way, particularly the way the seams spin. That one obviously was not one of them. And just so you'll know, between games, Bethany Dillard will be our spotlight player of the week. And I think you're going to enjoy hearing from her. From the outside, it's not there for Kitchens, and they get a third opportunity and still can't make it go, and Jalencia cannot get the rebound. This is something Mark Campbell does not like to see, is giving a fourth opportunity, and they're going to shoot it over Jalencia Williams for the first basket of the game. Ewing is the leading scorer on this team, averaging 14 a game. She also gets nine rebounds. And so she's one that you're going to be seeing near the glass. And there you go. It is in the paint. Ashton Baker for two. And Union is going to a half-court trap to try to see if they can unsettle some of this offense in and out. This team shoots 41% from the floor. Struggling a bit so far, and Baker again. Yes! Ashton is hot. The flash has got four, and that's all of Union's output so far. That half-court trap trying to get Delta State where they cannot get their offense set 
as quickly as they could if you're just backing off and playing half-court defense. You can see Mark Campbell directing traffic. That one off the iron unkind, and here comes Baker. She had nine rebounds against Alabama Huntsville on Monday night. There you go. Williams had the opening. There was just no way Ewing was going to stay with her there. That's what they look for is to see, does Jalencia have a step on her defender? Delta State trying to spread them out. And that goes off the knee of Hurst. Hurst averages 10 a game. They got four players that average in double figures. And in between the defenders, high bank shot goes through. Stackhouse with her first basket of the game. She's averaging 13 and a half per contest. And she's one that just makes, she, she has 68 assists and 28 steals on the game. There you go. Bethany Dillard with her first basket and Union with that 8-4 to four lead, and they're keeping that half-court trap. <clears throat> Mark Campbell told us in the pregame that if they can hold this team in the 50s, they, well, that one was from the corner. So Hurst with a three to make it an 8-6 to six game. They're going to give her a two. At least they said that her foot was over the line, so it's an 8-6 to six game, not 8-7. to seven. Ashton right at the top of the key, puts it up, and will draw the foul. Instinctive that young woman is, knowing when the defenders are on her. That's the experience that we see from her. So Baker goes to the free throw line for two. And off the back of the iron. That is unlike her because she is a 78% free throw shooter. And gets the second of the two to give Union a 9-6 to six lead. And they're still on that half-court trap. What you see with a half-court trap is usually two, but most of the time three players that are playing in the backcourt. And they're trying to slow up what is a more, if you will, disciplined tempo team. You don't see a lot of fast break coming from Delta State. They set a lot of screens, and and that one was stripped away beautifully by Dillard. Excellent job of defense on Ewing. Tell you, that freshman just has so many weapons on the floor. And you're going to enjoy our visit with her between games of this doubleheader. 13 on the shot clock for the Lady Bulldogs. Union coming in shooting 47% for the season. And fall away is there for Lucas, keeping that hot string that she had on Monday night. And Union to the 12-6 lead. Lady Bulldogs going for their 13th straight in the conference. It would be their 15th straight win overall. One of the longest winning streaks in Mark Campbell's team's history. That one off the back of the iron. And Baker again with another rebound. This point guard is just always in place for that. Let's see if Dillard tries to do her spin move. And she does. Did about a 360 there and managed to get the hook home. And Union by eight at 14 to six. Lady Bulldogs shooting 75% from the floor, six out of eight and playing tough defense. Now they're gonna work one-on-one against Emily Dunnigan. That was a bit of a mismatch and Emily commits the foul and so We are going to have a timeout, and it is Union on top, 14-6. to Now, this has been a season where the Lady Bulldogs have had two long layoffs between games because of COVID, either running through their team or their opponents. And this is one of those rare weeks when Union's women is having to play three games. And Mark Campbell says that's much better than having to sit idle. We just need to play. Um, I think they probably get tired of, of practicing. And hearing my voice, uh, I think that they need to be able to get on the floor and play, get our legs back under us. I know 
uh, as you can see in our Huntsville game, our first quarter and our third quarter, we shot 50% or above from the field. And in the second and the fourth quarter, we shot around 30. And so we've just got to get playing legs back and get into a rhythm of playing a little bit. And so uh, I'm looking forward to playing this week. There you go, the Union Pep Band. Minus their leader tonight, Mike Mann, as they strike up with word up. Union off to a very good start tonight, 75% from the floor. And so far, Delta State, 3 out of 10 for 30%. They've missed all three opportunities from behind the arc. Mark Campbell's team in 2007, let me, let me wind that back two more years. Mark Campbell's team in 2004 and 05 won 17 straight at the beginning of the season before finally they went on a five-game losing streak but then ended up winning the NAIA National Championship before it was all over. But that has been the longest winning streak in Mark Campbell's career at Union. And so this would be getting very, very close to that with a 15th in a row if they are able to pull this one off tonight. Hurst with the free throw. And this team has a lot of strong free throw shooters. Hurst 69% on the season. They don't have a slouch in the entire group, I can tell you that. And we got Samaria Thompson in there, and she has brought a lot off the bench during the course of the last month in particular. And the foul is called very quickly. I'll tell you a little story about fouls on this. (laughs) That's Kitchens committing her first. Typically, when these two teams get together, there aren't that many fouls. But when... Delta State played Mississippi College in the second of their two meetings. The first meeting had been a bit chippy between the two teams and to try to keep it under the control and didn't get the Plinko drop in Delta State with a rebound. So the second matchup between Delta and Mississippi College, 60 fouls were called in that game. Jumper goes through. Nicely done by Kitchens to get her first basket. She's starting in place of Takira Hicks, who averages 12 a game for this Lady Statesman team. And sadly lost her grandmother, and again, our condolences go out to her and her family. Union with eight on the shot clock. This is intense man-to-man defense on the part of Delta State. Baker for the three. And I think they're going to rule that it was an offensive foul. And they charge it to Samaria Thompson. So wipe off that three. And that's one of those that you hate to see go by the boards because she was wide open for it. Craig Roden has been an outstanding coach of these lady statesmen. And you know every time that they come on the floor... They're going to give you everything you ask for. And they tried the jumper over Williams, and that's been successful twice for Ewing, their leading scorer. Thompson's going to slow it up. And the flash thought about taking it down the left-hand side of the lane and just tossed that one right away. That was one where Ashton got just a little bit out of control and mistimed her pass. And they're going to go to the inside, a give and go, and the turnaround is not there, and Lucas the rebound. Union had a 12-4 lead, now it's an 8-2 run as Dillard hits the three. That's one where she knew the minute it left her fingertips, it was gone. And back to that half-court trap for Union. They saw the opening on the right-hand side, and it was a mistimed pass, and Union grabs the turnover. Thompson thought about the three. 
Goes to the inside and puts it up. I got to tell you, that young lady from Dyersburg has got a lot of tools in her kit. And she's only going to get better. She's a junior. But uh, you're going to hear Mark talk about her later in the game. That was a little finger roll underneath Williams that wouldn't drop. And Lucas has to wait for everybody to get back down court. And then just takes it all the way down the left-hand side of the lane, and it got stripped away. She a lot of times will get a foul in that, and that's going to be a foul on Baker. And the basket counts. Going to the line for a three-point play will be Stackhouse. Checking in for Union is Leah Cobble, as well as Shiley Morrison. And Mark Campbell at this stage of the season is going to play as many players as he can because he knows when you get at tournament time, people get in foul trouble, and you have got to have people who have experience against game-tough opponents. For the three-point play is Stackhouse. Easy. She averages 85% from the floor if the game gets tight and you're the opponent, you do not want to put her at the free throw stripe. She's money in the bank and traveling. And Ashton Baker can't believe the call, and nor can Mark Campbell because of the fact they said she just took an extra step before she tossed the ball away. So for Union, that's turnover number four. Delta State has given it up twice. After that 12-4 lead... Delta State has outscored Union 11 to 7. Again, they're taking their time. The shot clock is not working at our end. And it's out of bounds, but the shot clock is not on. At least the one at our end of the floor. So I don't know. The the one that's at our vantage point, you can't see it. Perhaps it is going at the opposite end. Big three. It's there. Beautifully navigated by Kitchens. And that comes right at the end of the first quarter as Union leads it 19-18. to A little bit higher scoring contest than we were expecting. Well, Mark Campbell says that you have to sacrifice some things when you play three games in a week. But he told us that's the kind of schedule the Lady Bulldogs will be on come tournament time. Is it is it better for us preparation wise to play two games? It it sure is. Uh, But, uh, you know, we're going to have to do this in the conference tournament. We're going to have to do it uh, hopefully in a regional tournament. And then if if we're fortunate enough to be in a lead eight, we're going to have to do it in there, too. So we've got to be able to do that and be able to turn it around and be able to prepare, get Sky Report preparation in, be able to execute those things and get to the next game quickly and get that stuff going through our minds so that we're able to put what we've learned all year long on each opponent to be able to put it in a condensed package uh, during a a three-game and five-day stretch. In that first quarter, Lady Bulldogs were 8 out of 12 for 67% from the floor. Delta State, 7 of 16 for 44% after having a weak first four minutes. They managed to get the ship righted a bit and the percentage looks a little bit better. Union has not shot that many threes and it's mainly because Delta State has been doing a solid job of defending the three. Two out of three for 67 percent. Lucas and Dillard have each had one. Delta State one out of four for 25 percent. Delta State's out rebounded Union seven to six. So what looked like it was going to be a dominant Union first quarter when we got to the five-minute mark uh, has turned out to be the exact opposite now because we have got an even game. And Delta's trying to go for its first lead. Just off to the right, and they get the follow shot. Offensive rebounds have been their strong suit this season. Kitchens off the bench already has seven points. So they haven't lost anything tonight by having her in the starting lineup. And they go inside to Williams. They're just going to go one-on-one with her. And now they come over and pick her up. 
Going for the bomb is Cobble, and it was just too much on it. They've made some defensive adjustments, and that's one thing Craig Roden will do, and he coaches his team that's on the bench very significantly, letting them know what they need to do if they get into the contest. They thought about jumping it over Nathan. They just went right by Williams and missed. Union on the fast break, and the jumper from the outside does not drop for Lucas. And she gets it right back. You want to talk about one of the most aggressive people you'll ever see on the floor, and traveling is called on Samaria Thompson. So Union could not capitalize off that turnover. It's actually a double turnover, so back to Delta State. Lady Statesmen have no, and there's nothing in their dictionary that says they're coming in here with the idea in mind of just playing well but not winning. Because they believe, and we've seen this through the years when they've had strong teams, when they've had 500 teams. They come in here and they give Union solid, solid challenges across the board. And that's what we're seeing here tonight. This is not unexpected whatsoever. And you can see Dunnigan trying to work hard in defense, and that was a big factor. But they got the offensive board again. And Davis knocks it home to make it a 22-19 lead. And again, Union giving so many offensive rebounds up. The big three is not there again, and Union getting cold from behind the arc and inside the paint. In fact, the Lady Bulldogs have not scored in the first two minutes of this second quarter. Down to 10 on the shot clock. Trying to keep them from the outside, and this is where they'll probably defend the most, and that is an offensive foul. Excellent job at the opposite end by Emily Dunnigan by taking that charge. Checking back in, Ashton Baker and Bethany Dillard. Keely Robinson is in for the Lady Bulldogs, giving Jalencia Williams a little bit of spare time on the bench. And so you've got everybody who's one of the original starters except Keely is going the post. And Keely almost lost it. And then gets that. Look at how quick that delivery was on that bounce pass, and Shanique just overshot it. Sometimes she, as great as she is, she just blows by so fast, and it just simply doesn't have the geometry correct. That's a killer when you lose that, and the turnaround jumper is there by Maxwell. Bryce Maxwell, she is from Ackerman, Mississippi, another one of the community college transfers on this Delta State team. They picked up two players from Mississippi College. And stealing. There you go. This could be a coast-to-coast -coast for Maxwell. She pulls back. And that was just simply one of that quick-handed Maxwell coming away with that steal. And that one's the air ball. Hurst just could not make that go. And 6.36 remaining. Keeley comes right back out, and Jalency is back in. So Mark has the original five in the contest. Bethany Dillard told us, and you'll be hearing that between games, that the fact that she's a freshman has not bothered her one bit. She just has plenty of confidence on that floor. Tell you what, this defense has been intense. The foul trying to reach in and get that steal is going on Ewing. That's only the first team foul of this quarter. Checking back in for Delta State is Stackhouse. Kivanche transferred from Arkansas Tech that for many, many years before going NCAA Division II was a powerhouse in NAIA and then moved up and was part of the Gulf South Conference for a long time. Big three for Dillard. And yeah, that begins to get Union a little bit of momentum because that was the first three points Union has had in this second quarter, and it took almost four minutes to make it happen. They're double teaming on the inside. I don't know if Baker can stay with her, and she draws her second foul. 
Kitchens was just driving hard and managed to draw the foul on Baker. And that's not something that you want to see is Ashton to come up with two fouls this quick in the game, and they're about to get Samaria Thompson back in there. And Ashton probably will not see any more action here in the second quarter. In and out on the second one. Union a chance potentially to tie this one. There you go. Ashton with the big one and overshoots it. Just too high off the glass. She had the momentum. In fact, probably too much momentum on that. And she quickly gets back down the floor off the end of the glass for Hill. And there you go. Dillard again. Nope. Short. Just not enough arc on it. And after that first four minutes, Lady Bulldogs have been a bit out of sync here. Just not have been able to get the rhythm and tempo of the contest that they had in the first four minutes. And that one, the iron was absolutely unkind. They can't get Ashton out of the game because the action has not stopped. She's going to try it again on the right-hand side and got it. Ashton with seven. That's why we call her the flash. If she sees the opening, she is just absolutely going to fly down that corner of the lane. Delta State slows it down again. That's their rhythm and tempo. They want to keep this game in the 60s because they believe that's their best opportunity against this union team. And is that the third or is it an offensive foul? It is the offensive foul. I think Mark Campbell was really holding his breath on that. Hurst with the offensive foul. And so it is Delta State on top, 25-24. Delta State is more of a deliberate team than many of Union's other opponents, as we told you. And Mark Campbell said that means defense is even more of a key if it's a low-scoring game. It's different. I, you know, I think you just adjust based on each opponent. We, it doesn't really change what we're doing. We, we want to play fast. And so um, some of the things that keep us from playing fast are is great transition teams. Uh, and obviously teams that make a lot of shots because we can't push it off of, off of makes as uh, effectively as we can off misses. And so um, I think the biggest thing with Delta State is always offensive rebounding. They, they usually average between 12 and 20 against us. And so if we can keep that number down below 10 and keep their second chance points under 10 or under, then I think we we have a chance to keep that game, keep them in the 50s. At halftime, it'll be the Bulldog preview with Coach Dave Niven giving us his forecast of what to expect in the men's half of this doubleheader. That'll be starting at approximately 7.30 between Union and Delta State. The Bulldogs, of course, are on top of the men's half of the Gulf South Conference by one game over West Alabama. They are 12-2 in the Gulf South, and they are 18-4 overall. It has been an absolutely brilliant season for both of these teams this year from Jackson, Tennessee. And Thompson will run the point with Baker finally out of the game with those two fouls. That was such a bang-bang play in which Hurst was charged with a foul, and that one was just forced. Jalencia just could not get it up high enough over her defenders. They have really doubled down on her in this game. You can tell Craig Roden has really studied how to deal with Williams. Jalencia has only got four points in the game so far, and we got four minutes left in this first half. Rebound comes off to Dillard. Bethany is the leader for the Lady Bulldogs with eight. And Thompson, that was an ill-advised shot because she just simply wasn't even really looking at the basket. That was just almost what you'd call a throw-up basket. So Lady Bulldogs still trying to climb the ladder to get back on top. They led by eight early. Turnaround. Jumper is there. What a move. Spin move by Stackhouse. That gives her seven. I am really impressed with the way that young lady handles herself on the floor. And I was told before the game, watch her because she will put on a show for you. And she also has a good three-point shot. There you go. 
Give and go, timing perfectly on the pass. It is Lucas to Dillard. And Bethany now in double figures with 10. Delta State still on top by one. Steve Beverly bringing you all the action from David Blackstock Court in Fred DeLay Gymnasium in Jackson, Tennessee on the campus of Union University. And underneath, that's a backdoor play that you have to defend well against it, and Davis connects. She's got six. She averages eight on the season per game, and so she's almost at her season's average. Here goes Williams, and let's see if they try to pick her up. She's got position and drew the foul. Going one-on-one against Jalencia, it's very hard to defend that. She's probably going to at least get an opportunity to go to the free throw line. That foul is charged to Stackhouse. So far in the game, only 11 personal fouls have been called. And Williams does not deliver. She's a 61% free throw shooter, so when she gets there, you really look for her to give you at least one out of two. And got the roll. I, <laughs> that, that one was one of those like an 18-foot putt at Pebble Beach that rolls around the cup three times and drops through. Lady Statesman by two. Boy, look at Lucas trying that intense defensive pressure. And they go back door. They have not been able to stop that one on the last two possessions. They did that time. Ewing could not connect. And she had a look. It is Dillard with the open three. Yes! Bethany with 13, and you saw Ashton Baker flying up, encouraging her teammate. And Union back to the lead at 30-29. to 29. But this is exactly what we expected, the kind of just, this is like old school basketball when these two teams get together. Turnaround jumper is there. We got a seesaw game as Ewing has six. And Union playing again almost more of the same tempo as is Delta State. But then looking for those openings where they can get a screen and get somebody. It is Dillard. No, that one's short. She had the screen. She had a good look, but it just didn't have enough height on it. As we approach the one-minute mark. And Delta State on top by a single point. Down to 12 on their shot clock. And look how far out front Williams is coming. And managed to hurry that basket. Union's going to have numbers. It's going to be five on four. I don't know if they can get her open. They do and cannot deliver. She wanted a foul, and she was looking in. Mark Campbell wanted one, and he is staring down that official at the opposite end, and she said no contact. And Mark is having a few more words, and the foul is charged to Samaria Thompson, and that is her second. So that means that Delta State can work this clock down to about six seconds before they have to take a shot to end the half. Would leave Union with very, very little time to try to go down and maybe get a tying three. And you can tell this team will eat up every bit of the clock that they can. They've got some more of their outside shooters in there. And a big three. No. Union's got about six. They're going to have to hurry. She is going to have to fly. Shanique is going to try to take it all the way down and could not release it. And Watson probably would have blocked it had she done so. And so Union could not get the lead basket and go to the locker room trailing 31-30 to after being on top 19-18 to at the end of the first quarter. So this has been the kind of rock'em, sock'em, robots type of game that you would have expected between these two. Now, let me run down some of the totals real quickly in scoring. Uh, Stackhouse is the leader with Delta State with seven. 
And you also have Ewing and Davis with six. Davis coming off the bench to deliver. And five for Kitchens. You've had seven different Delta State team players who have contributed to the scoring. And they also have the edge in rebounding, 17-15. to 15. They have really been crashing the offensive boards in this game. For the Lady Bulldogs, it's been a big night so far for Bethany Dillard with 13 points. She's five out of eight from the field and three out of six from long distance. So she's had herself quite a game so far. She's the leader, and Ashton Baker with seven. Ashton had to sit down about the last four minutes of the second quarter with two fouls. They have held Jalencia Williams to five points. There have been a couple of instances where she just simply missed the layups on the inside, and that's been that inconsistency, even though she's the leading scorer, that they want to see improve. So it is Dillard, Baker, and Williams, but Dillard and Baker with 20 of Union's 30 points at halftime, and Delta State leading the undefeated in the conference, Lady Bulldogs, 31-30. to Well, as we hit halftime, it's time for the Bulldog preview and time for Coach Dave Niven to give you an advanced look at what is going to happen on this floor when the men take over around 7.30. So here we go, this week's Bulldog preview. Well, it's halftime here during the Lady Bulldogs game against Delta State, and it's always good to have Dave Niven with us to talk about what we call the Bulldog preview for what's going to happen in the second half of this doubleheader tonight. And Dave, we've talked about this seemingly more this year than we have at times last year about having back-to-back games on Friday and Saturday. You've had another extended layoff since playing a week ago Wednesday night. Uh, what what's it like having eight days off like this? Uh, you know, there's there's I think it's it's good and bad. Um, when you're playing well, you kind of hate to to get out of that rhythm of, of playing games. Um, we we were dealing with with illness, and uh, so it came to a pretty good time for us. We we, uh, we had some some really uh small practices um during some of that time with uh with a bunch of guys out so um that came at a good time um we've been we've been able to to be pretty much back to normal for this week uh but uh you know you never know i I didn't think we the last time we had an eight day layoff i didn't think we handled it very well we practiced poorly uh we came back and and played poorly and got beat um this time our practice has been a lot better uh so, you know, hopefully that's a, a somewhat of a maturity, but uh, of our team. But uh, I, I really I, I look at at uh, this and just trying to paint the positives with our guys that hey, we're the freshest team right now in the league. Um, we've had we've had really good time uh, of rest, and this this break came at a good time in February, and so uh, we are fresh, ready ready to to make a push here at the end. So hopefully. Hopefully that's the case, but you never know. Well, let's talk about this Delta State team that comes in. It doesn't matter what kind of season they're having. They always seem to bring an A game against us no matter what. And if you look at their overall record, it doesn't look that impressive, but they have got some really strong contenders on this team. Uh, you got five guys that are averaging in double figures. Tell, tell us what you can in more detail about Delta State. Well, we, we played at, at their place the last game before Christmas. Um, at, at the time, I, I felt like they were probably the most talented team we had played um, up to that point in the season. And, and uh, you know, I, 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 I really, uh, really think they've got guys that are, that are tough matchups. Um, they've, got, they've got some post players that are really, really good inside. Uh, they've got a bunch of guys that can shoot the basketball. Um, so, you know, they're, they're, they present some, some challenges for you defensively. Uh, that was a game we won in overtime, really physical game, um, tough game. Uh, and, and, and really, um, I expect, I expect more of the same from them. I, 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 I think, I think they, uh, they will come in ready to play and, and, um, 
we we will have to be ready to play. We, we've got to we've got to be in a position where we're ready to defend and 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 hopefully continue making shots. We've we've uh, we've we've done that for the last several games. Been shooting at a high clip. Unfortunately, our defense has has taken a little bit of a step backwards during that time, and and uh, we'd like to get it all together, all on the same page, and. and and be able to, to really guard at the level we know we're capable of and, and continue to make shots along with that. Um, I think, I think that's something we probably haven't done so far this year. Um, so we've won a lot of games. We won a lot, we've won a lot of close games, uh, because of that. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm looking to, to hopefully get to a point where we can put it all together. And so, um, this is the time of year you, you, you'd like to start seeing that, that take place. You mentioning that, uh, particularly the last time that we were all together with West Georgia and down the stretch, I mean, that you had a lead and then all of a sudden they made a big run at you, closed the gap to within two and yet down the stretch in the clutch, your guys found a way to be able to not let that one get away from them. In particular, you play a game like that, how, you know, it, you think about when you get to tournament time, you, you potentially are going to have a lot of games like that. Regardless of who the opponent is, if you have a game like that and then suddenly, say, the last minute, minute and a half, you're able to put it together and hold on to that lead and win it. Uh, what does that do as far as building confidence in a team that, okay, when we face that situation later in the season, we know we can do it? I think we've had a lot of those. Um, like I said, we've won a lot of close games this year. And so our, our players, I think, uh, really have a belief that uh, – that, that a number of them can make plays. Um, and we, and we've got, we've got different guys, um, which is, is a, a blessing. Um, we've got a number of guys that we can, that we can go to for, for a big shot, uh, uh, you know, the last play of the game. Um, you know, I, I think, and we've done that in different games, different games, it's been different guys. Um, and so I think that's, that's, uh, certainly a benefit for us. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, it, it does build confidence. Uh, these guys, the more you do it, um, the more you believe it's going to happen again. And, and, uh, you know, it, it didn't come down to the, to the last possession or last shot, but certainly last, last minute or, or two of that West Georgia game, uh, we had to make plays at both ends of the floor. And, uh, we were able to do that. We had, we had guys make some big defensive plays, got some hands on balls that, that caused deflections and, and created turnovers and, and then had guys make shots and make free throws. Um, uh, thought we executed well down the stretch. Uh, got the ball into into the right people's hands and in places where they were able to, to take advantage of a matchup and and uh you know those are those are things you've got to be able to do uh late late in the year uh, to win those kind of games. Yeah, it doesn't hurt when you have a guy that you can feed it to with a technical foul and he can nail down four free throws in a row late in the game like that. That's a that's a bonus that I know every coach wishes they had. Uh Dave, just to talk a little bit about uh we, we hadn't had a chance to talk about individual players that much during the course of the season. But uh, if, if we look big picture at everything you've had, you told us when we started, uh, we got a lot of guys that we can go to in nine, 10 players that can easily come in and, and give us the kind of minutes that we're looking for. Uh, let's look at, let me, let me point out another guy that we haven't talked a lot about and that's Mikhail Simmons. Uh, just seemingly when he's in the game, there's, you don't lose any lack of confidence in his ability. No, no, Mikhail, uh, Mikhail was a really a late addition for us. Um, picked him up right, right as school was starting and, uh, you know, he's, he's a grad transfer. So, um, he is, he is a, a unique guy. Um, just really been a, a blessing to our team, um, provides instant leadership, just, based on his vast experience. He's played a lot of college basketball, uh, a lot of places, uh, at a lot of levels, and, uh, and experienced a lot of stuff. And um, so he, he, he came in and really had a very limited role to start, um, and that's gotten bigger and bigger as the season's gone on. He, he's a guy that I think opposing coaches look at and um, really struggle with. You know, it, it makes, it make, he makes us a lot harder to guard, uh, because uh, usually teams would like to try. We post up a lot of players on our team, um, and so usually coaches will pick pick your 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 post player when you're posting up a guard. They'll pick your post player to go double off of, and, and uh, the strength that 
that he brings to our team is the ability to sh- shoot the basketball and stretch the floor. Um, and so it makes, it puts coaches in a tough spot. And, and all right, how do we, how do we guard these guys in the post? Uh, if we can't go double off of him, who do we double off of? And so, uh, that's been a big, a big part of, of, uh, of, of our success and, and what he's brought to us. He's also a really big body that's strong and, and, and physical in there that has helped us defensively, uh, in the post. He, he, he's a guy that can guard, um, you know, a, a lot of different ways, but he's, he's been, a, he's been, he's been a definite plus for us in the post, um, with just his ability, uh, to, to guard a guy one on one, but we don't have to double just because we think, Hey, we like we like this matchup. Um, he does a good job down there. I had the pleasure of meeting his mom before one of the uh, weekend games that we had recently, and just such a nice lady from top to bottom. Uh, Dave, let's look at this one tonight with Delta State. You told us about their strengths. Mm-hmm. What do you see it from your vantage point as far as your guys, as far as keys to the game tonight? Yeah, I think we're – depth is, is – a, a big advantage for us. Um, our, our bench is deeper. We play more guys. And um, so we want to, we want to play fast and, and really increase possessions as much as we can. Um, I feel like the, the more possessions that, that we have in this game, the, the better it is for us. So we will try to, we will try to run and, and, and increase that. Um, but ultimately I think it, this is another one of those games where it's going to come down to our ability to defend. Um, if, if we can get stops and, and consistently uh, guard, particularly in the post, I think that's the strength of their team. Um, if, if we can defend where we don't, we don't have to double in the post and, uh, and don't allow three point shooters to get open looks because of that, um, then that puts us in a really good spot. Um, but, uh, but that's you know, way easier for me to say than for us to actually go out and do. We, we've got, we, we've got our work cut out for us. Um, but I think that'll be that'll be that'll be the key for me um, is is can we get stops consistently against this team? Oh, we sincerely hope that happens tonight. It's always good to visit with you at halftime of the women's game, and we'll be seeing you down on the floor about 27 minutes after the women's game ends. Good visiting with you, Dave. Thank you, Steve. And let's go back down to the floor right after this message. And we'll give you the halftime statistics for the Lady Bulldogs against the Lady Statesmen. Let's show you the halftime statistics. They're pretty even across the board. Union shooting 46%, 12 out of 26 at the half. Delta State, 13 of 30 for 43%. Lady Bulldogs... Four out of seven. They've been hot from behind the arc. They haven't put up that many, but four out of seven for 57%. Delta State, one out of five for 20%. That's below their season average of 32. Free throws, Union has only been to the line four times and has hit two. Delta State, four out of five for 80%. And this Delta State team shoots 74% on the season. Rebounding, Delta with the edge, 17 to 15. Not a surprise because they come in averaging 40 rebounds a game. They have really been going after the offensive glass in this contest. Turnovers, this has been a pretty clean game. Each team has only given it up four times and only have given up five points off turnovers. And with the score 31-30 Delta, that really makes it about as even as you could possibly expect, and the stats really bear that out with the only real exception uh, is the three-point shooting, but Union has had some trouble again making layups on the inside, just sometimes rushing them or simply not getting the geometry right. So it'll be interesting to see if Mark Campbell makes any specific kinds of adjustments in this second half. you got to feel like Craig Roden feels very, very good about what his team delivered in the first half. And with a, a team that comes in 8-6 and six in the conference, they are trying very, very hard down the stretch to try to get themselves in position for what would be a home field, a home court opportunity in the first round of the conference tournament. Right now, they are eight and six. West Florida, the number four seed at this stage, is nine and five, and so they need to make up one game 
in order to uh, have an opportunity to get that all-important home court opportunity in the GSC tournament. Union, of course, trying to protect home court advantage across the board. And it is Dillard to toss it in for the Lady Bulldogs, and here we go. Third quarter is really, Mark said that on Monday night, the team shot very well in the first and third quarters, but not so hot in the second and fourth. Here's Williams, going to try to work one-on-one. They're going to go right back to her. And she just has been uh, having a difficult time tonight getting those banks in. And at some point in time, they have to start dropping because they need at least about 15 points out of her. She was held to five in the first half. There was an opening there in the middle, but they didn't take it. Down to five on the shot clock. Fallaway jumper was way high and off the back of the iron for Stackhouse. Dunnigan, she's been rather quiet tonight. Emily has not even put up a shot in this game. There you go, Shanique. Nope, too far right. Shanique with those 18 points on Monday night, but she's been held to a single three-pointer in this game. So Craig Roden has done everything defensively that he has wanted to do in this contest, except perhaps to shut down Bethany Dillard. Turnaround jumper is short. So teams are trading a lot of missed baskets here to start this third quarter. The Flash had seven points in the first half, but sat down for the final four minutes of it with two fouls. They go to Jalencia again. The head fake, and she still couldn't make it work and couldn't get it to fall, but she'll go to the line for two, and that was a frustration foul for Ewing, and that is her third. So that is not good news if you're Craig Roden because your leading scorer has now picked up her third foul. And Jalencia, they needed that one to finally get this thing off dead center in the second half, tying the game at 31. This place almost gets as quiet as the Auburn Arena when Union's at the free throw line. (laughs) And Union takes the lead again, 32-31. Now, Mark is backing off the intense half-court trap pressure that he was doing in the first half. He only had Ashton Baker up front and not really challenging very hard. Trying to work around the perimeter and on the end. Here's the steal. And let's see what Shanique can do with it. She's going to slow it up because they were quickly back down the floor on defense. First turnover of the half. That's the fifth turnover for this team. It is Baker. Yes! Ashton with 10. And you can see that intense emotion on her trying to get her teammates charged up for Ashton. Four out of six from the floor, and Union leads it by four. And this Delta State team will just continue playing their deliberate pace. That's what they came in here to do, and that one's off the back of the iron, and you're getting to hear a lot of the Union student body, and particularly the baseball team. Baker goes to the deck, and she's fouled. We're beginning to hear it from over there with that student section. There is a fraternity that is giving them an extraordinary amount of support. Union will play it underneath. Lady Bulldogs trailed at halftime, 31-30, in case you have just joined us. They led 19-18 at the end of the first quarter. That was a dangerous, dangerous bounce pass, but they got it back. Jalencia is going to work one-on-one. Could not get it to fall, but got it, and the foul. And you could see that fist pump, and look at those guys giving her enthusiasm and encouragement. 
You can tell this has really been frustrating Jalencia Williams because she's only two out of seven, now three out of eight from the floor, but that time she nailed it. And it would be huge if she can deliver a three-point play. And does. Jalencia now four of five from the free throw line. And that's well above her season average of 61%. Union with all eight points in this period. This is Watson. And those fraternity guys are giving a lot of enthusiasm to this place. We didn't have a lot of that in the first half as far as crowd oomph. They have to hurry, and it's a steal. And here goes Beard, and she double dribbled. I think what happened is Emily was so surprised that she ended up with that steal, and she was looking for somebody down the floor, stopped her dribble, and picked it back up again. Oh, my goodness, that would have erupted this place if they could have picked one off there. Getting close to the six-minute mark in this third quarter. As we've said for many, many times in many games since they've gone to the quarters, third quarter for many teams is moving quarter. Iron unkind again, and Lucas the rebound. That is her fifth. Quick crisp passing. On the inside. No, it doesn't go. And a foul, and it's going to be... Williams drew the foul, and it is going to be on Kitchens. That is her second. So Union will play it. I cannot tell you how many layups that Jalencia Williams has not been able to get to drop tonight. And nobody's any more frustrated about it than she is. Got the screen. And the foul. And you can tell (laughs) she's almost like a trampoline, as enthusiastic as the flash is. Checking in Samaria Thompson, and she'll come in to replace Shanique Lucas. Shanique has gone just about all the way in this one. And again, Ashton on the season is a 78% free throw shooter, and she has just had some problems with that tonight. One out of three. And got the second of them. So Union still with a 9-0 run, and Delta State has not scored in this third quarter, but they made a big run at the end of the first quarter after falling down 12-4. And again, Union bearing down on defense. And again, they're having to hurry, and a big three is off the back of the iron, and Williams could not control it, but it goes off of the fingertips. And I'm trying to see who that is, checking back down at this end. Went off of the fingertips of Davis. So Union with yet another opportunity off of what we would call a shot turnover. There you go. And she couldn't save it. They tried that give-and-go bounce pass, and it was just too far ahead of Ashton Baker. And so we got timeout. Union ahead now 39-31. to Well, we told you our featured player of the week that you'll see between games is Bethany Dillard. And... Mark Campbell says, as a freshman, Bethany is already in high company with a number of the Lady Bulldogs of the past. I probably enjoyed the recruiting process with Bethany as much as I've enjoyed anybody in my 23 years. Uh, probably have, I know her better uh, coming in than I knew uh, most of the people I've recruited. And so uh, the one thing we knew coming in is that I thought she was an elite shooter. Um, I consider her up there with Caitlin Dudley and, and Kayla Hudson and Chelsea Botterford and Amber Reaches, um, some of the best shooters that I've ever seen at this level. I think she's that good. And uh, she also has the strength as a freshman to be able to compete at the four position in our league, uh, to be able to do that. And so she's a kid that's going to play two through four while she's in college. And so uh, this year we just put her at the four. She'll be moving to different positions probably next year. 
Lady Bulldogs have played solid defense in this third quarter. Mark Campbell said in our pregame interview that his goal was to hold Delta State in the 50s. Well, that may or may not happen, but it's looking on a good perimeter toward that right now. 39-31. to 31. Lady Bulldogs trailed at halftime 31-30, to 30, and they put up all nine points in this third period of action. And let's see what Craig Roden does out of that media timeout. And again, Union has backed off that half-court trap pressure and is concentrating more on... And Mark won't hesitate to go to a zone if he feels like that's going to be more effective. Thompson's playing off her offensive opponent. Down to nine on the shot clock. And losing it off her fingertips. That was so frustrating for Davis because she may have had an opportunity for a jumper, but it was late in the possession. Of course, this in checking in is Crystal Mays. She's a freshman from Batesville, Mississippi. And let's see how they work it around again, see if they're going to challenge on the inside, and they do. Let's see what happens with Jalencia this time. I think she's going to take it herself. Got it. Got the bank. Now she's beginning to feel a rhythm. That's 12 for Jay, and that makes it a 10-point lead. Union all 11 points in the third quarter. And that's the largest lead of the game for the Lady Bulldogs. Big three. No, off the iron and off the top of the glass. This has been a nightmare quarter for Delta State. Splitting the defenders and the foul. Now she's having her kind of game. Got the team up off the bench. And the whole place is erupting as Jalencia now is the game leader with 14 points. And Union, as, as Dillard will come out and... Shanique Lucas back in. Union on a 13-0 run for this third quarter. Leah Cobble back in for the Lady Bulldogs, and Jalencia gets it. What a night from the free throw line at five out of six. She's the game leader now with 15, but she has had 10 of them here in this third quarter alone. Finally beginning to get the geometry, and the Lady Bulldogs up by 13. Baker tries to go up high, and they still can't get one to drop. Lucas the rebound, her sixth. Thompson's going to drive it down the left-hand side. And she's open for the three. No. Caram's off. Had the range. It just simply did not want to drop in the cylinder. And we're down to three minutes to go in the third quarter with Union by 13. And line drive basket again is in and out. And Thompson the rebound, and she's on the bicycle. Wide open is Cobble. New. And Williams, the offensive board. Open again was Cobble. She is now. Yes, no. It just bounced off. Union with two good looks at it, could not make it drop. That would have been devastating for this Delta State team to have gone down 16. And on the inside, they finally get one in with 2.20 to go in the third quarter. That is their first basket of this period. So it's 44-33. Union went 14-0 until that basket by Delta State. Jalency is double teamed. She's in trouble. Couldn't get it to fall. Again, that's one of those could not get the angle right. The key for Union is not to give up two, three, four baskets here late in the quarter. And they're going to charge that one to Lucas, but that is only the first team foul against the Lady Bulldogs in this quarter. Checking back in is Emily Dunnigan for Cobble, and coming in is Maxwell for Delta State. 
And I'm a little surprised they said that was in the act of shooting. But anyway, it is going to send Stackhouse to the line for two. And you got to know she'll deliver 85% from the floor, from the free throw line. And, oh, my. Believe me, folks, we were not trying to do an announcer's jinx on that, and I don't believe in that. But that's a rarity for her to have one to lip out. Just barely got the roll off that one. It's a 10-point lead for the Lady Bulldogs. They want to aggressively attack the basket, but still eat up a little time in this quarter. And there goes the flash. Dunnigan could not get control of it in time to beat her defender, so they're going to go instead. Outside to Lucas. No. And again, here goes the flash. Yes! Wide open she was. 13 for Ashton. That was a four-point turnaround, and we have apparently some kind of issue with the clock. So they're going to go back to 30 seconds. Uh, Apparently the clock had some seconds to tick off there, the shot clock. That was the equivalent of a four-point turnaround with Ashton Baker just being so alert and picking up that basket. Down to the one-minute mark, driving the inside. Beautiful job by Stackhouse. That's what she brings to the table. She's in double figures now with 10. And Union leads by 10, but Thompson was a little bit too far, and they're going to go for the jump ball, and the alternate possession will go to Delta State. Sometimes Samaria gets just a little bit out of control with that dribble, and she gave that one up. That's turnover number seven for the Lady Bulldogs. And the thing that they want to be very careful of is still 50.9 seconds remaining here. That's enough time for Delta State to get two more baskets, and all of a sudden what was a 13-point lead at 44 to 31 could evaporate down to six. Although I got a feeling if they score, or if at least they put one up here pretty quick, Mark's going to take all the time he can. Got a screen and got a jumper for Ewing. She has eight. So they've narrowed it back down to eight. As I say, this team is resilient. They will come back on you at the time you think you are really rolling against them. Union does not have to put a shot up until... The final second of this possession. Backdoor play, and it goes to the flash. You can tell they have worked on that in practice. Now they're going to have to hurry down the floor. The floater does not go, and the Lady Bulldogs, a double-digit lead as they go to the huddle for the fourth quarter. And so it is 48-38. Well, Bethany Dillard in this game tonight has 13 points, and she's already proven herself by calmly delivering the winning free throws against Valdosta State two weeks ago. And Mark Campbell says the freshman is one of the most versatile players he has coached. But she just has a mentality where she's confident in herself. She really understands what she's doing. And, I mean, she went through a three-game stretch. Uh, last game against Delta, our first two coming back after Christmas, where she was our leading scorer. And so um, to have that happen as a freshman playing alongside some of the people she's playing along, when she's shooting the ball well and playing well, I think we're really hard to beat. Well, (laughs) I'll tell you what's interesting about that. When you see the interview with Bethany between games, she has some interesting things to tell us about her siblings and how they were influential in her sports career. And I ask her the magic question that I ask every Lady Bulldog, and that is this. <laughs> who picked on, who got picked on the worst in your household? And she doesn't hesitate to tell me. Mike Mann and the orchestra as they strike up here, and they bring so much to Fred DeLay Gymnasium for these games, and it has just been outstanding, their work. They are, they are some people who just do not get enough credit for what they bring to the table. And some of our young ladies who also get the crowd enthusiastic. And now that we're in February and class is back in session for spring semester, uh, we hope to be seeing more of the student body out. We will be right back here on Saturday afternoon. 1.30 will be our airtime. 
as the Union will be taking on the always tough Mississippi College. And MC has had the kind of teams that have come onto this floor, and they have undone a tough team that Union might have had in previous years. Lucas. Getting the first basket of this quarter is huge for Union. It is Dunnigan. No, just a bit left. She had the look again. This has just been a tough night for Emily. She has not been able to make them fall. Hasn't really been able to get open a lot. They've really borne down on her on defense. The first couple of possessions in this fourth quarter are crucial for Delta State. Fall away jumper is not there, in and out, and scrambling, and Lucas could not hold on to it. So big, big basket for Delta State. 48-40. to They've got to be careful not to make bad mistakes that lead to turnovers. And dropping through is Williams. 17 now, and that's 12 of them in this half. She had a rough, rough first half, but she has really come on strong here and has been making things happen in this second half. Down to 13 on the shot clock. Jumper in and out. They were robbed. The follow is there. That's the one thing about this team. They get so many good follow shots, and Maxwell with four. It's still a three-possession lead, but it was 13, and it's down to eight. So every possession is so crucial. And it is Baker. Pushed it way too far right. Ashton, again, she had a look, and it looked like she released the ball too quickly. The jumper again. And again, the iron has been so unkind in this second half for Delta State. Ewing had a good look at it. And it is done again. No! She has just not been able to make it drop. So again, a rather low scoring affair at 50 to 42, and they're going to take their time again. And they'll get Leah Cobble back into the game. The jumper is again off the back of the iron, and Lucas, the rebound, and here you go. Thompson's going to race them down. Head fake, couldn't get it to go. Probably should have been looking to Jalencia behind her. Samaria's only had one basket in the game. She's had some close looks. But again, this is is one of those games if you're a Lady Bulldog fan, it's just eerie. And again, another one will not drop. Four straight possessions that Delta State has had and has had good looks and could not make them drop. And here you go underneath. She had position. There was no way you were going to stop Jalencia. She wanted a foul and didn't get it. And they have only called 14 fouls in this game. This game has only been taking 68 minutes to play. Timeout called by Craig Roden. So Union leading it 52 to 42. Well, several Lady Bulldogs over the years have had nicknames based on how they play. 17 years ago, Laura Mitchell was the Rocket. Amy Fillimley was the Roadrunner. And Jada Perkins was Freight Train. Well, this year, Mark Campbell reveals what Samaria Thompson's nickname is. Um, Samaria's um, nickname is Bug. That's what she goes by. Um, well, I think this. that um, she, played a, she had a great year last year at Roger State. I mean, averaged almost 16 points a game. And, Got the foul line eight times a game and shot the ball pretty well from three. She's, you know, she had a surgery early on in the year. She also had, was out for a couple of weeks with some other stuff. And so um, she is just still getting familiar with what we do. Uh, she's athletic. She, she loves attacking the basket. She doesn't mind contact. She's a really good uh, selective three. Uh, and she gets the foul line a whole lot. And so I think there's a, several players on our team that love playing with her just because she's just off script a lot. And, Believe it or not, that's the first timeout that has been called in this contest by the coaches. They've allowed the media timeouts to do their work for them. And Mark Campbell is doing everything he can to keep this team loose here with their 10-point lead, 639 remaining. As we mentioned, 
They had a 13-point lead in the third quarter that went down to eight, but they were up 48-38 at the end of the third after trailing 31-30 at halftime. So the third quarter, as Union outscored Delta 18-7, was most definitely the Lady Bulldogs' 10 minutes. And let's see how they play it. Cobble is in the game once again for Union instead of Dunnigan. A high jumper is just nowhere near there, and it's going to Union. And tried to negotiate a little bit on that, but it was off the fingertips. Baker tonight with 15, Dillard 13, Jalencia with 19. They've only had five from the rest of the team. High pass inside. Yes, sir. That's perfect distribution on the part, particularly with the lob by Ashton Baker. She saw how Jalencia had a step on her defender and managed to navigate it home in Union leads by 12. Again, Lady Bulldogs trying to remain undefeated in the Gulf South Conference. Watson is open but will not take that three. Down to six on the shot clock. Watson's going to try. No, she's not, and they've got to hurry now. Desperation not there, and they excellent defense on the part of the Lady Bulldogs with that 30-second shot clock violation, the eighth turnover of the game for Delta State. Again, the Lady Statesmen have not made a lot of mistakes in this contest at all. Cobble's going to stay out there. Lucas comes out. Samaria Thompson comes back in. Bug with it. I, I deliberately held back on using her nickname until Mark revealed it there. Double teaming Jalencia. She's got to have some help. They're down to 12 on the shot clock. And creamed was Bethany Dillard as she went inside for one of her. She has the ability to drive inside the paint and come back with that reverse layup, and it was perfect. This is a young lady who has an 88% free throw percentage. And note, oh, my goodness. That's a rare miss, but let me tell you something. She has no hesitation if the game's on the line. She's, even as a freshman, perfectly happy. Missed them both. Oh, my goodness. You won't see that happen again this season. And the foul is charged to Cobble. Basket did not drop. This could be the equivalent of a four-point turnover here because you just do not see Bethany Dillard miss two free throws in one opportunity at all. But it happens. So at the line, it is Kitchens, and she misses. Oh, my goodness. As we mentioned, this is a 74. Excellent, always are an excellent free throw shooting team are the Lady Statesmen. Well, they have traded misses. (laughs) Four free throws between the two teams have gone astray. And we're under five minutes. And if Delta State is going to make a move, it has to happen soon because this is not a team that plays from behind very well, particularly in double digits. Thompson and draws the foul. She hesitated. And she'll go to the line for two. And we have a media timeout, and Union on top, 54-42. to 42. Well, in the last three weeks, Samaria Thompson has been giving the Lady Bulldogs some strong minutes off the bench, and Mark Campbell says she's the kind of player who can energize those around her. And um, so I think the more familiar she, she is with me, what we're doing, the more effective we are as a team. I think you'll see when she comes on the floor, we don't, we don't have a letdown. We actually have a little bump in what we do and it's a different way than, than maybe Ashton or Shanique do it it's just uh, the way Bug does it and so uh, our consistency making and finishing at the rim uh, will make uh, again that, if that improves between her and Ashton and Shanique uh, we have uh, there's a lot of places um, that we can go with this team 
Union on top, 54 to 42. Yeah, we got some who are trying to match the la- <laughs> they're trying to match the Lady Bulldog cheerleaders routine on the court. Lady Bulldogs were on top, 48-38, starting this quarter, and they held this Delta State team scoreless until the 2.20 mark of the third quarter. They held them scoreless in the third. And here in the second half, they have held they have held Delta State to 11 points. And so that is that is absolutely a credit to the defense. And this is the bug right here, Samaria Thompson. Got it. She's another one, 71% from the free throw line. And you give her the ball, and she doesn't waste a lot of time with it. Not a lot of crazy motion. She'll take about three dribbles and then wham, off the back of the iron. So Union has missed three of its last four from the free throw line. And in the first half, they were one out of two. Really wasn't a big factor. But Delta has got to really, and it's not a team that really is designed to have big transition game, and that one went almost into the next county. That is turnover number nine for Delta State. In the game, Union has picked up ten points off of Lady Statesman turnovers. So Dillard will toss it in. Dunnigan is back in over on the right wing. And let's see how Mark plays it. Inside, and that one was short. She tried that finger roll from about eight feet out and just couldn't get it up high enough. Eight out of 16 from the floor, and the foul is going to be on Dillard, and you can hear some of the reactions in the place. For Bethany, that is her first foul of the contest. Union has only committed eight fouls in the entire game. And Delta State only nine, which is one reason why this game has almost finished. And we have only been playing 78 minutes in the game. Jalencia comes out and Samaria comes out. I should have said that together and made my... Singular verb count, but sometimes it just happens when you have been at this for 30 years. (laughs) Got both the free throws. And checking back in is Davis. And the key thing for the Lady Bulldogs is not to play a game where you're playing not to lose. Ease some time off the clock on your possessions unless you have an open look, but don't make a lot of silly mistakes. Keely Robinson, who lost it. That's one of them I'm talking about right there. You can't afford that kind of thing to suddenly, and they almost had a three-point play. Foul is on Lucas. That is her first. And the key thing, this could be what's the equivalent of a four-point turnaround right here. So off the turnover, Stackhouse at the line. She has 10 in the game. And I'm telling you, that just, Stackhouse does not miss that many free throws in a game. She's two out of four, and that just rarely, rarely happens. 85% free throw shooter. You knew she was going to get the second of the two. This is not a team that employs a press to try to make a comeback because that's not Craig Roden's game. That's not what these players work on in practice. They play a solid half-court defense, and they're going to say, if you're going to beat us that way, beat us. But they don't try to go to a press. And the offensive foul, again, this one is charged to Keeley Robinson, and so that is her second and Keeley comes out, and Jalencia Williams right back in after barely a minute's rest. It's been a tough night for Keeley. And so checking out of the game again is Hurst. 
Delta still with time with 318 remaining. But the shots are going to have to fall with more rapidity. 18 of 51 for 35%. And they have quickly come back to pick up, and that's going to be a foul on Williams. They've been calling a lot more fouls a lot closer here in the last three minutes of this contest. So, again, with the clock off, that's how you want to do this. And so Ewing goes to the line. She's not been there tonight. And she is a 71% free throw shooter. Zaire trying another one. This would cut it to eight. So, Lady Bulldogs have seen a little bit of air go out of the lead, and they've got to be very careful to protect the basketball down the stretch. It says 55-46, but honestly, I believe there, were, there was another free throw that went in that has not been tallied on the scoreboard. Oh, my goodness. That is not what you want to see when you're up eight and there's two minutes and 40 seconds remaining. And as I mentioned that earlier, that this is not what the Lady Bulldogs can afford to have happen down the stretch. If you're going to take a shot like that, take it late in the possession, not with 18 seconds remaining on it. There's a steal. Double teamed in the middle. Here goes Lucas. She'll slow it up. Dunnigan for the three. No. Just has not been able to make it fall. There's still life in the Lady Statesman. Big three. No, that was desperation. Probably should not have been shot by Stackhouse, even though she's got talent from behind the arc. They're one out of eight from behind the arc this evening. And so now Union, they can play a little clock right here. This is really what they want to do with the eight-point lead. And short again, but Williams with the offensive rebound. Big one. And timeout, Mark Campbell. And he is shaking his head a bit. And I think he may call, but he didn't like a call that he felt like should have been made at the opposite end. And he's having a few words with the official about that. We'll keep it right here, 55 to 47 with 97 seconds remaining here at Fred DeLay Gymnasium. This has been sort of an up and down quarter for the Lady Bulldogs. They started right out and managed to get this to a 12 point lead. And then after they had the lead and about four minutes left in the game, they started making mistakes or taking some ill-advised shots. The problem with Delta State is they haven't been able to capitalize enough off of them. And there they are again. I, I'm, I, they're trying to get hired tonight to uh, join the Lady Bulldog cheerleaders. And who knows, perhaps they will. <laughs> so here we go. All right, they spread them out to try to do the inbounds play with 14 on the shot clock. All right, inside it goes. And making it fall, going right to left, is Jalencia with 21 points. She's got 12 rebounds. And after that rough first half, she's had 16 in the second half. Double-double tonight. And Union pretty well has this on ice. And that three-pointer is just way astray for Kitchens. And Union can pretty well take its time because they're not going to challenge. And this is not the kind of strategy that Craig Roden employs to try to go to the foul fest. He just doesn't believe in that. He says, we either win on the way we play or we don't. Union with seven. On the clock, they're going to have to hurry. And that was a case of somebody did not communicate well, and Jalencia lost it, and Union picks it right back up. It's going to be a two-on-one situation, and Jalencia holds it back up. 
They have to shoot by the time eight seconds are remaining. So the Lady Bulldogs are going to win this one and go 13-0 in the Gulf South Conference. And Mark rotates his players going all the way over to the left wing. Down to three. They got to hurry. Lucas had better get it off. Got it! The bank shot goes through, and Shanique will tell you she practices that every day. So Lady Bulldogs do make it to 60, and that's it. It was what you would call old-school defensive basketball, but as Mark had said, if they could keep the Lady Statesmen in the 50s, they felt like that they would have the upper hand in this one, but it was not without a real struggle. Union wins it 60 to 47. And we'll run down the totals for you. And they were down 31 to 30 at halftime, but had a big, big third quarter in which they outscored Delta State 18 to 7. And any time that you can hold this team that averages 64 a game to 47. Uh, you have had a great night's work. And so there they are in their closing huddle. It was, as I say, old school basketball tonight. If you wanted to see a lot of wild transition baskets, this wasn't your game. But if you wanted to see good defense across the board, this was it. I'll give you the stats here. Lady Statesman, 18 of 53 for 34 percent in three pointers they were one of nine for 11 percent that was a big this is not a three-point shooting team but they are 32 percent on the season but they could only make one drop and that was kitchens back in the first half free throw line 10 out of 15 for 67 percent they lost the rebounding edge after holding it and they, they topped the rebounding in the first half, but Union got the edge 37 to 33 in rebounds in this contest. And then uh, looking also at uh, free throws, 10 out of 15, 67% for Delta State, and that was below their season's average of 74. Over for Union, 23 of 55 for 42%. At one point earlier in the game, they were in the 50s, but it was, as I say, a defensive matchup, and that eased back down. Union 6 out of 19 for 32% from three-point range, but three of them were from Bethany Dillard, and they needed every one of them that she delivered this evening. Union 8 out of 14 from the free throw strike, 57%. That's well below their 72% average on the season. They just had a couple of possessions where they missed two of them. How many times would you ever expect to see Bethany Dillard miss two in a row in one single opportunity? But it happens, and she'll be back next time out and probably deck about seven in a row. As we mentioned, Union led the rebounding 37 to 33. Turnovers in the game. Delta State gave it up 11 times, Union 10, and Union had the edge in points off turnovers 13 to 10. Now let me run down your scoring. Uh, Union held down Delta State that has four players averaging in double figures. They held them down to two. And that was Ewing, their top scorer, with 12, and Stackhouse, their number two scorer, with 11. So they had half of the 47 points that Delta came up with. And for Union, only five Lady Bulldogs scored in the game. But here's the way it went. Uh, Bethany Dillard with 13. Ten of them were in the first half. And she was three out of six from behind the arc. Ashton Baker, 15 points, six rebounds. And she ended up with six no, no I'm, I'm looking at the wrong category here. She had one assist in the game, but she was 6 out of 10 from the floor for 15 points. But we're going to give our player the game because she had such a dynamic second half after really struggling in the first half, was held down to five points, missed a lot of layups, but really got her act together in the second half. Jalencia Williams, a double-double, 23 points, 12 rebounds, three assists, and went 9 of 17 from the floor, but even more important, 5 out of 6 
from the free throw line. When you got a 61% free throw shooter that can shoot 83%, you have gotten a big, big bonus in the game. So Lady Bulldogs take it 60-47 to and remain undefeated 13-0 in the Gulf South Conference, 18-2 overall, their 15th consecutive victory. Delta 10-10 and now dropping to 8-7 and in the conference. Well, we told you that Bethany Dillard was going to be our spotlight player of the week between games, and I think you're going to enjoy the personality of this young lady as she tells us about her home in Arkansas, or her parents, and also how she has just grown to love the game of basketball. And as a freshman, she just shows so much potential for the future. So here we go. We're going to bring you right now a special message from Union University and then our spotlight interview with Bethany Dillard. The word excellence implies uh, one or more standards of excellence by which to measure. We represent Jesus Christ, and, and there is no greater standard of excellence. Our approach to excellence has been validated, for example, by uh, the careers of one of our graduates, who, while she was a graduate student at Duke, solved a theoretical physics problem that had gone unsolved for 30 years. When I onboard new students, uh, I share a a story about why I chose Union. I chose Union because excellence matters. And I tell them that when you do all things to glorify Christ, excellence is the expectation. The class of 2020 uh, had a 98% pass rate on the NAPLEX, which ranked us number one in the state of Tennessee. Nationally, it gave us a ranking of eighth out of 140 some odd colleges of pharmacy across the U.S. The debate team has really helped me in all areas of my life, specifically academically. It's helped me to think critically because I don't get to choose which side of a topic that I get to argue on. And so when I go into my classes, I'm able to look at things from all angles and think critically about it. Being a part of the debate team that did win the national championship was really, really rewarding. Not only did we win the national championship, but we did it for our teammates, we did it for our school, but most importantly, we did it for the glory of God. Oh, the more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Because your friends are my friends, my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. between games after the Lady Bulldogs have just finished up with Delta State and I'm joined by a freshman from the Lady Bulldog team and that is Bethany Dillard from the town of Momel, Arkansas. Bethany, nice to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Now I got to start off by asking you about now most people maybe have never heard of the town you live in but it's really right at Little Rock. Tell us Tell us a little bit about what what it's been like to to live and grow up in that part of the country. Um, It's definitely in the South. I thought coming to Tennessee that Tennessee would honestly be more Southern, but Arkansas definitely wins that round. I don't know. We're pretty close knit. My high school is really close. Um, I enjoyed it. I honestly probably would move back to Arkansas when I get the chance. So you went to Central Arkansas Christian School in 
that is, uh, and as I understand it, that that is a very, very strong uh, academically as far as Christian schools are concerned. But also, uh, you've had a strong uh, athletic program there. What what was it like uh, playing for them and also for the academics of your school? Oh, I I loved every year that I got to play at CAC. Um, I've basically had the same coach since seventh grade, so we had a really close relationship. Um, academics were great. That's honestly, union symbolizes what CAC does, so it was kind of an easy decision coming to Union after going to CAC because they're very similar. I was going to ask you, as I've asked a number of the Lady Bulldogs, what it was that led you to come to Union. And so obviously what you just said, there was a big factor in that. Very big. Um, Coach Campbell is also another really big factor. Um, Our old assistant coach, Sarah Hammond, actually was the one that recruited me. But then that first call from Campbell, I was hooked after that. Easy relationship, easy school, easy easy choice. Even when he's not happy with you guys, if things aren't going on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, let's face it, Bethany, there are some nights, and Mark's even said this in an interview from time to time, he said, there are some points in the game that I'm not a very likable guy. <laughs> very true. It's a very true statement. <laughs> but you all forget it after the game's over with. Oh, yeah. Next practice, it's all it's all brushed off, and we're good. Yeah, that's and that's the way it has to be. I got to ask you one more thing about your hometown, and that's the fact. I understand you have one of the longest pedestrian bridges in the world. There now, now tell me, have you taken the opportunity any time to go across that bridge? I have. I, it's been a minute, but I did when I was younger, a little more active when I was younger. So yeah. A little more active when you're younger. I mean, my goodness, you're all active all over the court. Now. When I was younger, I played like four sports at one time, and then I had to narrow it down. So I, I'd say I was more active when I was younger. What What were the sports you played other than basketball? Volleyball, softball, soccer, did some track. Um, I really wanted to play for a football team, but they wouldn't let me. So <laughs> were you, what were you going to do, be a, a linebacker or a kicker? <laughs> I wanted to be the kicker, but yeah, I would have played either. either well, we had that. somebody from Vanderbilt to be a kicker, so I mean, it it has happened before, but they 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 said no. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, probably the best. See, see, you would have come in and made history at that point because I don't think we've ever had a woman kicker to, to come in and play for one of our teams before. Uh, well, let's talk about this. Uh, you have been remarkable as a freshman on this team. Now, from time to time, we've had legendary freshmen who have come in. Michelle Street back in the 1990s, who was a Miss Basketball in the state of Tennessee. And she came in to play and started right off the bat for Union, was a, a spectacular player. What's it been like for you to come right in and be a regular starter on this team as a freshman? Um. It's definitely been an adjustment. Um, I actually started as a freshman in high school, completely different in college. Um, it's definitely, a, I have a role that's, that Campbell has um, pointed out to me, and it's just been up to me to fulfill that role. But the older girls have definitely been a leading hand in all that. So not too much pressure, but still kind of some pressure. You've had, in fact, there were there was a period in late December, early January, you had about three games that you led the team in scoring. And it, as Mark has talked about, you just absolutely are one of these people that there's no worry or concern about putting the ball in your hands in a given situation. But I, I wanted to ask you, since you're such a, a, a solid three-point shooter, is there a feel when you're letting go of that thing and you know it's there when you're putting up a three? Oh, yeah, definitely. When the when my fingers are on the seams and it has that perfect spin mm-hmm. on it, you I know it's going in. And I can tell you about that. And I, I didn't come along in the three-point era, but <laughs> it wasn't quite that easy for me in those situations. Uh, and you talked about having your role on this team, but – 
you're looked on as well as, as one who can provide leadership, even though you're one of the younger players on this team. Tell me what it is that gives you that confidence to be able to do that and to be in that situation. Uh, I'm definitely putting a lot of trust in God with that. He gave me the ability to, uh, he gave me my voice and it's up to me to use my gift that he gave me. But Coach Campbell definitely has my back on that. Uh, he emphasizes all the time, use your gift, use your gift, use your gift to better the team and better others around you. So that's, that's where my mindset is on that. Now, the Valdosta State game was one that uh, it was a tale of two different games. And for our viewers at home who perhaps maybe didn't get a chance to see it, uh, Lady Bulldogs were down by as many as 16 in the first half and then made a, a dramatic rally in the third and fourth quarters to win it 59 to 56. But there was a point late in that game that you get fouled and you got two shots. And I have never seen somebody, I don't think anywhere as a freshman, who just seemed like, ah, nothing to it. <laughs> I'm just going to put them up. And at that point in time, you were shooting 94% for the entire season. What, what is it about free throw shooting? Because some people don't do it well. What is it about free throw shooting that you just seem to be absolutely comfortable? They're free shots. I mean, we shoot them all the time in practice and after every workout that I would do when I was younger, I'd shoot free throws. Even when you're tired, you gotta shoot free throws. So I think that kind of prepared me for the late game situations where put me in this situation, I'm gonna make the free throws. When when that happened against Valdosta State, were you were you as calm as you appeared to be to to me and those who were watching from the stands? I'm gonna say I was. Maybe I was a little nervous, but I mean, eh, I got it. Hey, you know, and just to think, three more years of this is gonna be something else to see you progress in that regard. Uh, let me talk to you a little bit about your family and what that has meant to you as you were coming along. And uh, tell me about your brothers and sisters, whatever, and, and just give me a little thumbnail of the Dillard family. Oh, the Dillard family. Uh, there's five of us. Well, there's six of us now. My brother got married last year. Um, two older siblings. They're twins, a brother and a sister. My brother definitely helped me. Honestly, I think he helped me the most get to college because he rough house with me when we were younger. <laughs> um, he kind of pushed me a little more. Uh, my dad was my coach since third grade, and then he had to let me go in seventh grade uh, to my high school coach. Uh, my mom just, she's my backbone. Anytime I have a problem, I go to her. Um, the college decision, definitely, they helped me through it, but then they let me make my decision. Now, I have to ask this because I ask it of every Lady Bulldog that I interview, and that's this, Archie right? You had twins that were older than you. Who got picked on the most in the family? When I was younger, it was me. Now, me and my brother are a little bigger than my sister, so we kind of pick on her a little more, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely me. <laughs> now, tell me, how, how about your siblings? Uh, were they athletes as well? Uh, they were in high school, but neither of them went to college to play. I know they got to be proud of you doing what you're doing now at Union. You would think. They might not admit it. My brother might not admit it, but <laughs> my sister's got my back on that one. I, I'll, we'll have to have a conversation with your brother on that because that's, <laughs> that's a classic story right there in <laughs> itself. Uh, tell me what your Union experience has been like, not with athletics, but just the university as a whole. What has that been here in your first months as a student on campus? Oh, I've loved every minute of it. Um, the staff is amazing. I really chose Union because of the, um, the class size. So like I have every class with maybe 20 people. The professors are amazing. If you have a question, you just go up to them or even email them. Some of them, even they gave me their phone number. So like when we have to miss a game, it's, it's nice. Um, we have this thing called Union Cup, and our houses are in it. And right now we're in the lead, so we're going to hopefully win that. Competitive, have to win. But, yeah. You're competitive on everything. I can tell that. Very much so. Bethany, tell me about, tell me about this aspect of life. Uh, of course, you went to a Christian high school, 
and, and now you're at Christian University. How much is that vital to your life? Oh, that's my number one priority. Um, put God above everything else. I mean, he's the one with all the answers. Um, maybe we don't know everything that's going to come, that's going to happen. I obviously didn't know what my future has in store. I still don't. Um, got to put my trust in him and let him lead the way. Now, let's talk about your major at Union. And if right now you had to say what you would like to do after you graduate, what would that be? I'm majoring in exercise science. And hopefully after Union, I'll get into grad school to become a physical therapist. That's what I want to be right now. That might change. Yeah, it, it always changes. But, you know, that's interesting because we have a number of former Lady Bulldogs that have gone into physical therapy. In fact, a couple of years ago when I had a shoulder issue, all of a sudden here is Laura Duck, who was a former Lady Bulldog, and she was my therapist. She put me through. <laughs> and Laura, was, Laura was really, really good. But uh, it was, but that, that's always interesting because we just sometimes take for granted the number of people that have to have rehab and you get closer to my age and it's going to get even more so, but to, to have young people to, to continue the supply chain of young people to go into that field. What, what is it that has motivated you at least for now to consider that? Uh, I, as I'm very competitive and my older brother roughhoused me. So I've had a lot of injuries. Um, so I've had my fair share of physical therapy and, I don't know. Ever since I was younger, I've just always wanted to help people. And being a physical therapist, I can help athletes that were like me. So it's kind of staying in the business. How about your teammates on this Lady Bulldog team? This team seems to really enjoy. And I, I've over 30 years, I've had a chance to watch so many of them come and go. But this team just seems to really enjoy being with each other off the court as well as on. What, what, what is it like with your teammates? We have a very special team. I honestly thought coming out of high school, I wouldn't have as close knit friends as I did then, but this team is just, it's something different. Everyone knows everyone. We're just that close. Um, I was fortunate to have four other freshmen come with me. So there's five of us. So we're all really close. Um, and hopefully we all stick together and finish out these four years. Well, I think there's there's no question about it. It's always exciting when we have a group of new freshmen who come in because, I, I, in fact, I'll never forget, I told you about Michelle Street. I'll never forget the year that she and four others, they called themselves the Fab Five when they came in. And I'll never forget, uh, I looked up and it was spring semester and I look up in my speech class and all of a sudden there's the entire fab five in there. And I said, this is a sinister conspiracy <laughs> for, for me to have all of you at one time. <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, that, that is really, we always enjoy seeing the, the new young women and men that come and be a part of this program because uh, you all bring so much to the table. Last thing before I, I let you go is what do you hope in the long run is what you take away from your experience at Union when it's got plenty of time, but it goes by very fast? What do you hope to take away from this? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, hopefully I take a lot from it. I mean, I've already gained a lot from my experience already. Um, I think leadership, I can still learn a lot more with that. And I hope to uh, learn a little bit more a little bit more about ministering to some younger ones and maybe even some older ones. So hopefully when our new freshmen come in, that I can be that light or that path for them to help them on their journey. It has been so much fun to visit with you and to learn more about you and also to find out about how your brother roughhoused you and caused you injuries and <laughs> everything that goes along with that. It wouldn't be, you wouldn't have a sibling relationship if that didn't happen. Bethany, it has been really a joy to visit with you. You've brought so much to us already this season, and I wish you a lot of good luck as we go down the stretch toward tournament time. Thank you for having me. That's Bethany Dillard, one of our freshmen on the Lady Bulldog team, and she is one of our starters. Well, it's about time for us to get cranked up with the men's game between Union and Delta State, so let's go down to the floor right now as we get you ready with the starting lineups. 
On Steve Beverly's TV Classics, we put Andy Griffith first. For Underwater Adventure, we put Sea Hunt first. For Marriage and Family, we put Ozzy and Harriet first. For anyone named Snooky, we put Your Hit Parade first. For people who dye their hair red, we put Lucy first. On Steve Beverly's TV Classics, we put George and Gracie first. Steve Beverly's TV Classics, Saturdays and Sundays, 7 to 10 on TV6, where old reruns come first. give you those starting lineups for the Bulldogs of Dave Niven and first the Delta State Statesman coached by Mike Neenaber, a well-known name in these parts. And here we go. For Delta State, they'll be starting Lee Cotton and he averages 11 a game and six rebounds. Lee is a 6'4 sophomore from Cleveland, Mississippi and a community college transfer. Malik Cartwright from Holly Grove, Arkansas, a sophomore who goes 6'6", six, six, and you'll see a lot from him averaging 14 a game. Their top scorer averaging 15 and 7 rebounds is Aaron Brooks. Aaron is a senior from Phoenix City, Alabama, which is right on the border across the Chattahoochee River from Columbus, Georgia, where I'm from. Casey walker Gregg from the Bronx, New York, and he is another community college transfer, a 6-foot junior. And Casey averages 11 a game. And you have Kellen Dietrich. And Dietrich is a 6'1 freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio. Mike Neenaber has mined the harbors of Cincinnati since he was the head coach at Bethel. And with Bethel being a Christian school and their denomination had a huge Cumberland Presbyterian congregation in Cincinnati. And so Mike has continued to recruit those areas. And so those are your starters for Delta State. Now, your Worthy Road starters for Union University, J.C. Hawkins. And, of course, he's the 6'6 graduate student from Independence, Kentucky. Tyree Boykin back in the starting lineup once again. Tyree averaging 19.5 points a game and 46 assists on the season. Jeremiah Littlepage from Birmingham. Hello to Ma Littlepage, wherever you happen to be in Birmingham tonight. And Jeremiah is averaging seven a game and four rebounds. Ty Parks, big guy with 11 and a half a game and six rebounds a game. And Ty, he's from Pocahontas, Tennessee. And then Bo Gigel, the guy that you're going to hear Dave Niven talk about Bo during the course of tonight's game and what he has brought to the table. Bo's average is now up to 14 a game, seven rebounds, and he has 20 block shots on the season. And those are your starters brought to you by Worthy Road Studios for the finest in video production of live events, church services, or sports such as this tonight. It is Worthy Road Sports number one in West Tennessee. And I'm delighted to be joined here in the booth tonight by our executive producer, Paul Schultze, and our director, Christopher Reasons. And they have been doing a scintillating job this evening. And I hope you're going to enjoy this one between Delta State. Delta is in here 8-12 and and 7-7 and in the Gulf South Conference. Union leading the conference by a single game, 18-4 and and 12-2 and overall. So this has been really, I think, one of the finest seasons, if not the finest, that Dave Niven has ever had since... Union has been in NCAA Division II, and he told us before the season started that this was going to be an extremely deep team and talented team, and in fact, it is. So we're about set to see the starting lineups come onto the floor. Steve Beverly to bring you all the play-by-play activity this evening. 
and I hope you're going to enjoy it. So here we go as we see the players introduced. Averaging in double digits, Boykin nearly 20 a game. Gidgel 14, Parks 11 and a half, and Hunter Vick 10 and a half. For Delta, they got five guys that the starters all average 10 or more. Brooks at 15, Cartwright 14, Dietrich 11, Cotton 11, and Walker Gregg 10. So they can put points on the board. Union averaging 80 points a game, Delta 70. Mike Neenaber is known that he'll switch up between zone and man-to-man defenses. And here we go. Union won the first meeting of the two down in Cleveland, Mississippi. And it's going to be Little Page to jump it against Cartwright. And the statesmen come away with the tip. Big shout out to my my good buddy and former student, Philip Tang, the veteran voice of the Delta State Statesman on radio, and it's good to see him back in town tonight. And again, Union will play mostly man-to-man defense. And that left-hand hook does not go, and Union grabs it off the beginning. Cartwright will try to go with a lot of that inside play. And the jumper. It did not get the Plinko drop. The price is right just did not work for him on that shot. Oh, my goodness. Mike Neenaber, for so many years, the head coach at Bethel University and then went to Christian Brothers and from there to Delta State. But such a, a, a wonderful individual and uh, the gentleman that I always enjoyed seeing coming in here because he was such a nice man, but also because his team would give you everything that you asked for and part right with the first basket of the game. Vic dished it off, and I don't think Little Page was expecting it that quickly, and Union coughs it up. Going for the big bomb. And it's not there. And the rebound to Gidgel. Bo's rebounding is now up to seven a game. And as I mentioned, 20 block shots on the season. So he'll probably get involved with that. Big three. No. Bo just didn't have it up high enough. But Boykin with the offensive. They, what, they are giving Jeremiah some fits down there in the paint. There you go. The three is there for Ty Parks. And Union takes its first lead of the contest. Knee neighbor will play very, very deliberate and absolutely disciplined offense. Fall away off the back of the iron for Brooks. That's their leading scorer and rebound. Union has done a good job of protecting the house and in the conference only losing one game on this floor. And that one, Boykin was trying to go with a give and go and just had it stripped away. From the corner, the three is not there. 
36% they shoot in three-pointers does Delta State. Bulldogs trying to protect their one-game lead in the conference. The fall-away jumper is there. Boykin with his first basket of the game. He's going to be our spotlight player of the week on Saturday, so I hope you're going to enjoy that. I'll be sitting down with him tomorrow to talk about his life and career in basketball. And from the corner, Parks has it to rim off, but Union again on the offensive boards. And the hook just really, he was robbed on that one. Jeremiah has had two on the inside that should have dropped, and they just didn't. Watch Gidgel on defense. That was a terrific job of Cartwright maneuvering himself. And Philip Tang told me before the game, you're going to enjoy watching this guy and how he maneuvers on the court. And this first half is the kind of thing where I think both of these teams may be on even terms. And there you go. The dish off the little page, and Jeremiah went in for it, and we'll have his free throws after we give you this little break. Dave Nevin says a big key to victory against a team like Delta State is to get defensive stops on multiple possessions. And he told us what the upside is when you get anywhere from two to four stops in a row. It starts, the key for us is it's, it, it helps us play faster. And you, don't, and you don't have to take the ball out of bounds uh, after a made basket. We can, we can play a lot faster. We, we are typically giving everybody on our team the green light. If they get a rebound and, and their momentum is taking them the other direction, that they can keep going. We don't have to stop and look for an outlet to a point guard. Uh, I feel like everybody can handle the ball and, uh, and, and makes pretty good decisions. And you're going to be hearing Dave talk a lot about some of his other players. He's going to be – giving you some of the lowdown on Bo Gidgel during the course of this and also some of his top defenders. And as this Bulldog team has continued to be resilient and hang tough down this January and February stretch of the Gulf South Conference season, you've just seen them do things that has proven the worth of having an older team. As Dave said to us earlier, old is good. And Union's on a four-game winning streak overall, but a one-game lead over West Alabama. As we come down the home stretch, we'll be back here Saturday afternoon. Women's game will be with airtime of 1.30, and then the men will tip off at about 4 against Mississippi College. And then we got four more games before it's tournament time, so only got two more weekends after this one. We'll be bringing you the first round of the tournament right here on all of our networks as Little Page goes to the free throw line and gets it. Jeremiah is a 63% free throw shooter, but he's been working on trying to get these things to fall better. And in and out off the back of the iron. And stepping on the end line, that was so unfortunate for Dietrich. He just could not keep his balance, and so give it back to Union with an opportunity to double the lead. And they'll lob the inside, and Ty Parks could not get it to fall, but Little Page on the follow. That offensive rebound that Dave Niven has told us so many times is so crucial for this team to be able to convert, and they did. Chance of defense from the Bulldog bench. A fall away three and falling to the deck was Dietrich. Just could not make it happen. It is Gidgel. Nope. Too high. And here come the statesmen on the attack. And working right up against Gidgel, and he's charged with his first foul because he did not have position. And that is the first foul of the contest on Union. We had only 21 fouls called in the women's game, and Delta State had had a game against Mississippi College earlier in the season where 60 fouls were called. It was was just... 
it, the the game was played very very cleanly. Lady Bulldogs winning at sixty to forty seven, but it was an old fashioned defensive effort. And working over Gidgel, who could not afford to give up a second foul, and Cartwright gets the layup. And let's see how Dave Niven plays it. Give and go to the inside, and perfect timing on the block to knock it away from Jeremiah. Yeah, almost a foul on the part of Union, but taking it down the lane, it's Dietrich to get his first basket of the contest. And we're tied at eight. Wide open, Little Page and the foul. That is what you call perfect court awareness and perfect timing on the pass. So Little Page is starting out like he's going to have himself a fine night. J.C. Clossy is checking in as well as J.T. DeBuck coming out. Hunter Vick and Ty Parks. So Jeremiah will go to the line trying to convert the three-point play. Short. Our halftime feature will be looking back on a milestone event on the Union University campus of 14 years ago. And it is one that I know many of us will never forget. Big long three is off the mark for Cotton. Trying to take it home is Boykin. And a big three. Nope. Not there, but Union is really crashing the offensive glass. And they did not get the Plinko drop, and the rebound comes off to Cartwright. That one looked like more of a pinball machine where it falls about three times and you can't get the flipper to turn it back over. Wide open for a three. Nobody was contesting Brooks. And he connects. Brooks, and let's see what the whistle is. And Union commits the violation, so turnover for the Bulldogs, their second of the contest. And we got multiple substitutions. Hunter Vick checking back in, and Gidgel coming out. Cotton is a... 41% 41% three-point shooter in Walker Gregg and Dietrich, 40. So they can pound it home from outside. This team shoots 45% overall from the floor. They were trying for one of those alley-oops, but it was a little bit too far right. Six on the shot clock. That was a, what I would say, a 270 spin, but it was not there. you got some guys who can fly out there for Union right now. Bank is in there. Boykin, who can do that as a finger roll bank and make it fall. We've seen him do that so many times during the course of this season. So we got a seesaw game going right now. As they work the perimeter. And once again, Brooks looking for the opening and goes over, and it is the offensive foul. Bang, bang play, but perfect positioning for J.C. Hawkins to draw that foul. That's the third team foul on the Statesman, and checking into the game now for them is Zamari Mentor. He's a community college transfer from Las Vegas and a senior. Goes 6-6. Now, watch them try to get inside. They've got Jordovich into the game now at the post. He had a good game on our last TV contest. Fall away jumper. Not there. And it's going to be an over the back on Jordovich. He's got a lot of his buddies up in the stands, and they are all over the place trying to give him encouragement. As we're under the 12-minute mark, here at Fred DeLay Gymnasium. 
I wouldn't exactly call this a defensive game so far because of the fact that both of these teams have had opportunities to connect. Union's already put it up 16 times, and <clears throat> Delta State 13. Beautiful screen, perfect opportunity for the three, but it doesn't go for Mentor. And the give and go in the dish and just forcing it home, knocked from behind, and Jordovich could not convert it. Union still clinging to the one-point lead. Anytime a Mike Knee neighbor team comes onto this floor, get ready. It is going to be tough. I don't care any of the three schools where he has been a college coach. It is going to be tough. Big three for Cartwright. He is four of six from the floor and nine points in the game already. Nine of the 14 for the Statesman. And we've already had four lead changes. The hook just will not drop, but an offensive board for Zordovich, and it's going to be stolen. It's going to be a one-on-one situation. Good, and the foul... And there was nothing that J.C. Clossy could do about that because he was moving on the play. And so when we come back, we'll give you an opportunity to see what happens with the three-point play. But here's something you may have never considered. When Union goes on offense, the Bulldogs have a specific spot on the court they're told to reach. Dave Niven explains what that's all about. Um, every one of our players, their job they know is, is to try to get to the logo at the other end. And, uh, and that, that logo is the GSC logo right in the, in the lane. Um, every, every time we get the ball, we're, we're pushing and trying to get to that, to that spot. Um, occasionally you get to that spot and you can take one more dribble and shoot a layup, but good teams aren't going to do that. But, um, but against anybody, if you get to that spot, you're going to find there are open guys. Um, and everybody has a job to do. Some guys, are their job is to sprint to the corner. Other guys' job is to, is to sprint first to the rim and then to the weak side, and then other guys' job is to be the trailer, or what we call the crack back. There's your swag table. All the union logo clothing, the hats, the sweatshirts, the T-shirts, and those young ladies doing a terrific job of manning the desk. Anytime you come to a union game, come away with some swag. There you go. And you got Delaney Susain and her friend back here. Delaney Sue is the she's the manager of that place back there. <laughs> of course, we caught her one night chowing down on pizza. So an opportunity for a three-point play. And at the line is going to be Walker Gregg. He's a 71% free throw shooter on the season. This team only shoots 65% from the line, though. And to have two guys who are really, really, actually three guys who are 71% or better, that's a little surprising, but it dips down very quickly. If you're late in the game, Cartwright is the guy you want on the line. He's only 53%. Big three. No, air ball. Just nothing there for Clossy. And let's see how Mike Neenaver plays it. You have to have strong leadership who can quarterback a club on the court and be really the equivalent of a player coach. And there you go. No one home to be able to pick up that one, and Union almost did the same thing at the opposite end, but they go underneath. Yes, sir. Quick passing, crisp into Jordovich. And Union has cut it back to a two-point margin. This Delta State team, despite the fact being 8-12, and 12, that's very deceptive because they have had many, many close games that they have lost as opposed to Union winning many close games this season. And there goes DeBuck with the floater, and it's short. But gets his own rebound and hits. JT with his first basket to tie it at 16. 
And again, very slow, deliberate dribble for Walker Gregg. This is a guy that just does so many things so well. Ten points on the season, almost a slide. Some of the fans wanted a travel call, but the official says no. And he had to force that one. That was just excellent defense on the part of J.C. Hawkins. As we approach another media timeout, as we will be at the eight-minute mark. Tell you what, DeBuck just does not hesitate, but didn't have the right geometry on that bank. Big three from the corner. Iron was unkind, and let's see who, and it's going to be underneath to Delta State. And they're going to charge that one to J.C. Hawkins. That's the fourth team foul on Union of the contest. Delta State has committed three. We've got a lot of substitutions coming in. Boykin's going to take a rest. Clossy, JT DeBuck, they're going to all come out. They're keeping Jordovich in the game at the post. Down to eight on the shot clock, and it's stolen, and it hit the end line. Oh, my goodness. And you had Ty Parks wide open down the floor, and Union, unfortunately, gives it right back up. And Dave Niven does not understand the call, and he's having a, a, a mild discussion with one of the officials. So you give Delta State a new 20 on that one as we're under eight minutes. I thought for a minute Cartwright was going to pull up for a three. They got a hurry down to six. And they go for the bomb. Off the mark. Two out of ten from behind the arc. Union is one out of eight. This has not been a clinic game when it comes to seeing three-point shooting. Union spreads them out. Open. And just not enough arc on that. Union will get it back. And that will be after the media timeout. So it's all dead even at 16. Now, earlier Dave Niven told us about certain players that are designated as crackback players. He explains for us what a crackback is designed to do. So if, uh, if, if you're the crack back, your job is to, um, is to get behind that guy's crack. So, uh, and that is, that is where, so we're getting to the logo. And, and if once you get there, you should know there's guys in the corners, there's, there's a post that's going to be weak side. And there's a guy that's right behind you where the, the spot that you just left and you entered that three point line and I can throw it back to him and, and somebody's going to get a good look, um, out of that. And so, uh, but that's all predicated by our defense. Um, it's harder to get any of that if you have to take the ball and, and inbound it to start your offense. Uh. There are some of the fans populating Fred DeLay Gymnasium tonight. And that, look at these guys. They want him to get on camera, and he does. Those are some of the baseball players at Union. <laughs> that was... Are we sure that wasn't a Halloween scene right there? Uh, That looked like one of these monster shows that you see. (laughs) You never can tell what's going to happen with baseball players at Union University. (laughs) Mike Mann and the orchestra with Word Up. And we are dead even at 16 in a little bit lower scoring affair than I think we might have anticipated. Bulldogs averaging 80 a game, Delta State 70 a game, but the shooting percentages have been somewhat abysmal so far. Union only 29% and Delta State 35. So Union to play it with 18 on the shot clock. Gidgel back in the game after an extended rest. He forced it on the inside, and somehow they managed to get it into Little Page, and he had to force it up twice before the foul was called. 
It is Brooks committing his second. So Jeremiah has spent a good bit of time on the line tonight. He has five points. He's Union's leader. Six. And Union goes back to the lead. It is a 5-0 run, but it's so taken so long for those five unanswered points that <laughs> you can hardly fathom it. Connects them both. Jeremiah so far in the game tonight. Three out of five, and Union back to the lead at 18-16. Chance of defense again from the Bulldog bench. And they're going to work the corners. I thought he was going to go in for a reverse layup, but it didn't happen. Nice block by Ty Parks. He completely denied that perfect timing. And knocked away perfect timing at the opposite end. And they're trying to discuss, is that going to be a shooting foul or is it going to be just simply a block out of bounds? And instead, they're going to give it to Union underneath. Each team with only four team fouls. And going to the deck hard was Gidgel. And they're going to charge him with traveling. Well, like the old song by Billy Grammer, I laid around and played around this old town too long, and I feel like I've got to travel alone. I guess that's what Bo, did, uh, Bo Gidgel just did there. And trying to go down the lane and going off of his foot. What an unfortunate situation for DeMond Franklin. He is a community college transfer from West Helena, Arkansas. And he had a lane down on the right-hand side, but it just completely hit his foot. And that's turnover number four for Delta State. Union has given it up five times. Turnaround by Parks will not fly. So Ty has only been able to navigate one three-pointer in this contest. as we're under six minutes in really a profusely low-scoring game so far. Working against Little Page, down to 10 on the shot clock. Well, that's what you call patience. Cartwright waited probably 15 seconds before he made his move and ended Union's 6-0 run, and we're tied at 18. It takes great patience to... Hold on that long. Here you go. Backdoor play, and Parks gets it. Good balance on that fall away going from his right to his left. And it's not easy to be able to, even underneath the basket, to be able to connect with that. And going back to a more deliberate tempo. Looked as though Minner was going to call for it underneath, but he was picked up very quickly by Little Page. They slow this tempo down with five on the shot clock. They're going to have to make a move quickly. And the jumper is not there. And they just tipped it back outside for the offensive board, and the three is not there. Third opportunity at it. And another big three. This one doesn't go, and finally Gidgel comes down with it. They had three opportunities at the basket. They go inside to Little Page, who goes right between two defenders and can't make it drop. Oh, my goodness. That was like going through a cave with the walls cr crashing in on you. Oh, my goodness. What a catastrophe not to be able to make that drop. Getting close to four minutes remaining in the first half. And crashing inside and going to the line for two will be Kellen Dietrich. Foul is charged to Little Page, and that is his first. Nobody has more than a single foul for Union. That's the Bulldogs' fifth. Brooks has two fouls for Delta State. They don't want to have him get in trouble. He's their leading scorer at 15 a game and their leading rebounder as well. 
Dietrich connects. He's a 71% free throw shooter. And checking back in, Tyree Boykin and JT DeBuck. And coming out, Little Page, who's played a lot of minutes here in this first half, as well as J.C. Hawkins. You've had five Bulldogs to score and four Statesmen. And nice form that he has on his free throws to tie it back up at 20. We'll be getting another media timeout on the next stop in the action. Gidgel thought about the three and did. And could not make it go. Union one of nine from behind the arc. It has been a nightmarish evening for long distance. And Delta a chance to retake the lead. Watch him double team the ball over in the corner. Down to nine on the shot clock. They haven't been able to get something open in the paint. And that one was tipped as he shot it. Walker Gregg could not make it go. Open for the three. No, way, way short. Parks just did not have enough authority on that shot. As we are under three minutes now. Neither of these coaches have called a timeout in this first half. Saving them off or down the stretch. And again, he's doing that patient dribble. And what a move he made, Brooks, with eight. It looked like he was going to keep his back to the basket. And all of a sudden, he just put a fake on and went right in for that layup. And that's our sixth lead change. JT in the paint. Gidgel. Took the dribble and got the offensive board, I think. Yes. Puts it back up. Too high. Tipped by Parks. Three opportunities, but this time Ty will go to the line after our timeout as the foul is charged to Franklin. So timeout is called with Delta State up 22-20. Here's one for you bowlers in the audience. Dave Niven is often prone to using a bowling analogy when it comes to what he expects his defense to do, and here is one of them. Um, just slows you down. It's only a second or two, but a second or two is a big deal when you're talking about a, a, a team being able to set their defense and, and get back in transition. And so, um, so certainly it, it gives our offense our offense a lot of confidence um, if we get stops, and and our goal is to try to get six uh, more than six turkeys in a game. Um, for us, Turkey is three three stops in a row. Um, we get more than six of those in a game. We feel like uh, it gives us a really good chance to win that night. Always love when you give bowling references that <laughs> are analogies in there because it, it, it certainly resonates with me in a case like that. Well, Dave Niven has been a lot less calm in this huddle than he was in that interview that we did with him. He has been preaching to his congregation right here. He has just not liked what he has seen in attacking this defense of Delta State. And with this profusely low-scoring game at 22 to 20, this is just this is so far below what the Bulldogs' output output usually is at halftime. And the Bulldogs shooting only 25% from the floor and 10% from behind the arc. Just nothing is dropping with any degree of rapidity. They've out-rebounded Delta 26-19, but they haven't been able to convert. They've out-offensive rebounded them 10-3. And here's Gidgel. Finally gets one to connect. You've seen these little short runs that both of these teams have made in the first half. But this has been almost as much of old school defensive basketball and missing the backside on the back of the iron. This has been one of those that in the women's game that the Lady Bulldogs won 60 to 47 was purely old school defensive basketball. There's been a lot of defense in this, but there's also been a lot of missed shots by both teams. 
And trying to clog that middle. It's not there and picked up by J.C. Hawkins. Oh, my goodness. He didn't know who was there and tossed it right away. From the corner, the three is short. That was an ill-advised three, and it's going to be a backside foul. And let's see who they call this one on. It's not a shooting foul. That's only the 16 foul. And checking out is Hunter Vick. So Union to play it. With 88 seconds left in the first half. And DeBuck, who has the flyingest hair of anybody that you will ever see on a basketball court. And here you go. And they say that it was a foul underneath. And it's an offensive foul that is charged to Bo Gidgel. And that's the third turnover that Gidgel has made in the game out of the six that Union has. So Union's going to play a little bit more half-court trap defense to try to slow down some of this. They spread them out in very fast and quick passing on the part of Delta State. And trying to carry it all the way home is Cartwright, and he's the first in double digits with 10. Boy, DeBuck can fly. He's got that low center of gravity, just like Tyree Boykin. They've had a few problems in the passing lane, and Tyree was way off balance trying to take that three. And I can see Dave Niven almost grimacing. Didn't want to see that shot. And let's see, timeout is called. Dave Niven, the first coach to call a timeout, so as he does... Let's talk about this. Since Christmas, you've seen Bo Gidgel become one of the most aggressive players in the entire Gulf South Conference. And his coach, most of the time, is one of Bo's biggest fans. Bo is uh, one of the most talented players I've coached. Um, he, he, has, he has been gifted um, in, in a lot of areas. Uh, just I mean, size and athleticism, um, those stand out. But, uh, but there's also skill to his game and feel to his game that not everybody has. Um, you know, he's been shooting the ball uh, at a high level skill wise. Um, he, he makes passes um, that, that not everybody can make. Uh, and, you know, you combine that with his strength and athleticism. He's a, he's a tough cover in the post. Well, to be candid, this has not been an ugly first half. It has been a ugly first half. Cowboy curling trying to get into the action. I, I really thought I saw him on the Olympics overnight coverage in the past week, but uh, he, he didn't win. He is working against J.C. Clossy down to eight on the shot clock. They're going to have to hurry. Union badly needs a stop here, and that one is it. But they got to hurry themselves. They're counting it. And it went too high, trying to get it inside to Jordovich. And Union has played a little bit out of control in this game as far as some of their passing opportunities because Jordovich was there, and they just simply lobbed it too far behind him. So a final opportunity as Union's bringing everybody up. Delta's going to have one chance to put up a shot. And going right by everyone was Walker Gregg, and he had the lane and couldn't make it fall. Well, folks, as we say, this has not been what you would call one of your clinic games so far as Union trails Delta State 21-24. to here as we go to the locker room, for Delta State, it has been Malik Cartwright leading the way with 10 points. He's five out of eight from the floor, and Brooks has eight, three out of six. But they've struggled from behind the arc, as has Union. 
uh, for the Bulldogs. Jeremiah Littlepage had seven points relatively early in the first half, and then he's been shut down. Five points for Ty Parks, but they, they were really quiet from the floor in the last five minutes of this first half, and so Union way below what it usually is at at halftime. 24-21 to 21 is your score. So we will be back with your halftime statistics and try to give you an idea of where we're going with this one in the second half. And uh, we'll just see exactly how both of these coaches try to make some adjustments in the locker room at halftime. But right now, uh, we are going to take you back to something that has been, I think, probably one of the signature moments on the Union University campus. It was one of the most nightmarish evenings in the university's history. It also was an event that tested the metal and by the providence of God showed the resiliency of this university. Many of you remember February 5th, 2008, when Union University and entire West Tennessee and Arkansas area was just hit with one of the most devastating tornadoes in history. I was a professor here on this campus as well as the play-by-play voice for the Bulldogs. And I remember the night well. I remember the days afterward and watching how this university came together to revive itself after one of the worst, worst situations that you could possibly imagine. Tonight, after this message from the Union University School of Pharmacy, We're going to take you back to what happened as university, as Union University went from rubble to renewal. Hello, my name is Sheila Mitchell, and I'm the Dean of the College of Pharmacy at Union University. We are pleased to announce our new three and a half year accelerated PharmD track for our PharmD program. I'm excited about the flexibility this will allow our students who are ready to start their careers. Students will be able to opt in to the accelerated track upon admission and will have the flexibility to change tracks at any time during their tenure here at the College of Pharmacy. For more information about our accelerated track and other tracks we have to offer, please visit our website or contact our admissions team. That is uh, an area of concern right now, and if there is, in fact, rotation in there, if there is a tornado in there, that would be taking it just north of Interstate 40 out near the Union University area. saw what I could not believe. The devastation was massive. The destruction was beyond comprehension. Everywhere I turned in the residence life area, walls were coming down, students were coming out, some cut and bleeding, and then I heard these words, we're trapped. I went to campus Wednesday morning and stood outside the building. And I just thought, there is no way one person could live under that. And yet, there's seven boys that God said, you're mine, and I'm not going to let you go. The sun came up, we looked across the campus, the devastation was far worse than anything we even imagined at the time. But Wednesday morning, the Union University community was at its best. People coming together, caring for each other. What should have been a storm that cost dozens of lives, maybe hundreds of lives, no lives were lost. Nine students seriously injured. It is truly an act of God, a providential moment in history. I was expecting to get back and have nothing. Pretty sure as of right now, I haven't lost one thing. That shows commitment for the students and how much you care, I think. 
anybody would love to have that in their lives. It has the most caring faculty and staff I've ever seen. And I would definitely, no matter how far away you live, go to Union. February the 5th till now, we have seen an amazing transformation of the campus. Demolition of the residential life facilities that were hardest hit. What that storm did, yes, it blew the campus apart, but it blew all of their souls together. I love Union. I'm only a freshman and I, you know, have only been here one semester. I can't imagine, you know, what the seniors and juniors feel like. It's not the average college experience to go through an F4 tornado. I really appreciate this school. Fourteen new apartment style facilities, bigger, stronger, better than any residential life facility in this region. The new dorms are just amazing. They're so uh, solid and secure. Having the laundry in there is really nice. Uh, the microwave and the nice countertops. Being back, I'm really excited to be in the new dorms, to be creating a community, and to just be giving glory to God for our safety. Just walking under the campus, I mean, wow. Look at, look at this, this is amazing feels like it's kind of coming to a close. We're closing out on the, the post-tornado era, and we're probably a new day at Union. It's very exciting just to be a part of it. I have no doubt that in coming days, Union University will be a better, stronger university better connected among the student body, more committed to our Christ-centered core values, having a campus that is blessed with wonderful residential facilities. The number of quality students desiring to come to Union University has never been greater. We're excited about each and every one. And that number continues to grow. We trust that you will join us as we build, as we prepare, as we plan for years to come, the best days of Union University are ahead of us. At Union, we seek to be Christ-centered in all we do. We don't focus on Christ-centeredness just in the chapel. One of the great opportunities I have in serving at Union is meeting students from all over the world. And one specific student that I think of is J.V. Martinez. And since coming here, I've watched him grow in his walk with Christ, connect to a local church, invest in others, share the gospel with others, and be a godly man. He, in many ways, is a great example of a student that we're hoping to invest in. I'm J.V. Martinez. I'm, I'm a senior from Tampa, Florida. I'm um, studying business management. So coming to Union, I had never actually had a Christ-centered life modeled for me. It's the genuine heart of Union, and I think it permeates from every level, from the top all the way to the bottom, including the students. It really changed my life and what it looked like to be a follower of Christ. It's no longer I, it's Christ who lives in me, and like that's not something that just happens at church, but it's something that happens 
throughout all of my life. And the Office of University Ministries here at Union, we seek to help students take their next step in their walk with Christ. And we do that through chapel, discipleship groups, mission trips that we call Go Trips, service opportunities. And one of the things we understand is that every student, every faculty member, every staff member has a next step to take in their walk with Christ. And we want to come alongside of students to do that, to help them grow, to help them connect to a local church, to know God's word and to serve and to advance God's kingdom all over the world. And you may have noticed that Joe Ball, who was Union student during the trying days of 2008 in the aftermath of the tornado, is now, as you saw in that public service message from the School of Theology and Missions, uh, he is now Director of Discipleship and Ministry for Union University, and he has aged quite well, I might say. <laughs> well. Let's go and see what has been the tale of the tape in this first half. And I got news for you. You're not going to see too many impressive totals here. Look at the shooting. Uh, I, I said that this was not a clinic. I, uh, this is one of those that you almost need to just throw the tape out and not show anybody <laughs> this one. Union 8 out of 33 for 24%. Delta State. 10 out of 30 for 33%. And that's way below the averages for both of these teams. But look at this in three-pointers. Union, 1 out of 11. The only one went through for Ty Parks. 1 out of 11 for 9%. Now, Union on the season averages 37% in three-pointers. So that's, you have to say that's abysmal. And the same thing for Delta State. That's a 36% shooting three-point team. Two out of 13 for 15%. Just not good. Free throws, Union, four out of seven for 57%. Only two guys have been to the free throw line, and that's Little Page and Gidgel. And Delta State, two out of three for 67%. We have only seen 12 fouls called in the entire game. Union has out-rebounded Delta State 27 to 21, but they haven't been able to convert a lot of second chance points in this one. Uh, the offensive rebounding is in Union's edge 10 to three, but again, not being able to come back with second chance points with the kind of rapidity that you would hope in this case, that's, that's what's happening. Turnovers, Union's given it up eight times, seven times for Delta, and you can see each team has picked up four points off the other's mistakes, and that is your halftime statistics brought to you by Worthy Road Studios, number one in live video production all throughout West Tennessee. As we're about a minute 40 away from the start of this half, and hopefully we will see a little bit more precision on the part of these teams in the second half as it has just not been a pretty one to watch up to this point. You credit some of it to defense, but there you go. And this, in case you wonder where this is, this is back near the locker room area of Union University. This is where the guys go, and you keep going. That door is where they meet. And coming out of there, you're beginning to see one of the assistants. But that's where they meet and congregate uh, at halftime and pregame try to sort out what they're going to do and what they need to do in the second half. Reminder again, we're back with you on Saturday afternoon, 1.30 will be our airtime on E Plus TV 6, eplustv6.com, on uuathletics.com, and as well on any Roku TV set or a Roku player, you can get us on the free to view app. Again, download the free to view app and you can see us on your big screen at home uh, on anywhere in the country. So that's the story for all of it. 
And we'll be here as Union takes on Mississippi College. Lady Bulldogs attempting to stay undefeated in Gulf South Conference play. 13-0 after their victory tonight over Delta State. The Bulldogs trying to hold on to their one-game lead here in the Gulf South Conference men's race. But they're going to have to get an energy level in this second half. Alternate possession will go to the Bulldogs as we start this final 20 minutes of play. And Hunter Vick will toss it in, and we are about set to go. Nobody in any serious foul trouble for either team. Delta State has a couple of players with two. Bo Gidgel has two for Union. Parks had five points in the first half, but Gidgel was held down to a single free throw. And open for the three. It was a dangerous cross-court pass and off the back of the iron. That is an amazing set of balance to keep that one. Years ago, if a player was on his back like that, that would have been called traveling, but that went by the boards about 15 years ago. And the Bulldogs, as they get it, the give and go down the lane, perfectly executed with Walker Gregg getting his second basket of the game. Parks, the finger roll doesn't go. He's going to try again, and again cannot make it go. And Union will have it back again under the basket, even though Delta State is lobbying for it. Parks is absolutely frustrated with himself. He's two of seven on the night. That's just not a Ty Parks night. Bulldogs down their biggest deficit so far is five, and that's where we are right now. Little Page going to take the jumper. And way right. And Bulldogs are just out of sync. That's the only way you can say with it tonight because that was an open shot, and it just wasn't, it wasn't even close. And again, chance of defense from that bench and from the fans across the way. What a drive, and on Gidgel just navigating it home was Cartwright. That was a double spin move and a head fake, and Delta State is up by seven. And for Gidgel, that is his third foul, and this has just not been Bo's night at all. Three-point play, and it is a three-possession lead for the Statesman. And I can tell you, Dave Niven is probably scratching his head about what else to do in this case because this Bulldog team is capable of much better, and there you go, another one. Tossed away. You can't really call that miscommunication. It was just a poorly timed pass. And Bulldogs now with eight turnovers in the contest. This guy can pull up for a three at any given time. Dietrich. Watch Cartwright work against Little Page. As I say, he's a very patient player. He's going to try to drive it in with him. And couldn't get it to drop right as the clock ran out. And it is Hawkins. Oh, he was robbed. And you can see Little Page going after all of them. This may give numbers. Oh, fans wanted an over and back, but they did not get it. They were screaming for an over and back. And again, since about the eight-minute mark, this Delta State team has really controlled this game, even though it's not a huge lead. Big three. Again, they used so much of that clock, and underneath for the offensive board was Walker Gregg, 
He's got six. And Union's got to wake up. Double teaming against Hunter Vick. Little Page, fall away, finally drops. Union finally converts to cut it to eight at 31-23. Little Page with nine in the game. He's had a rough time from the field tonight. Three out of ten. This is where what Dave Niven talked about earlier, getting multiple stops in a row is so crucial for Union because of the pace of this game. You're not going to have that many possessions. They kick it to Dietrich on the outside, and he got it. Dietrich with seven. Biggest lead of the game for either team now. Delta State has just come in here playing with house money, and the foul is charged to Walker Gregg. That's his first. So far, we've only had 14 fouls called in this game, and we have timeout with Delta State up by 11. Well, talk to any coach, and he'll tell you basketball is a game of matchups. And Dave Niven says when Bo Gidgel is on his game, he's a challenging matchup for every Union opponent. Um, if you put a big on him and he's out on the perimeter, um, because he's been shooting it at a high level, that big's got to come out and, and defend the three-point line. And there's not many bigs that can take away a three from him and, and move their feet well enough to stay in front of him. So. He's a, he's a matchup problem um, every night for our opponent. Um, he's, a, he's a tough guy to know who, who to guard him with. Uh, but I, I also think there's a, a strength to his game that uh, often a lot of guys with his ability don't have. And that's just, a, I think he's a smart player. Well, to say the least, Bo has had a rough night tonight because Gidgel with three fouls in the contest. He's made four turnovers and 0 for 5 from the floor. You have nights like that where it just doesn't drop. He'll be back in this game before it's over with, but the key right now for Union, again, is trying to make defensive stops that just have not been at a premium in this game. Bulldog shooting 23% and 8%, one out of 13 in three-pointers. And that tells you a big story right here from this team that oftentimes can really get the tempo going with the three. Little Page works one-on-one, gets the hook. He's in double figures with 11. He took it right to Brooks. Trying to get the energy level. They do not have the services of Mikhail Simmons, who injured his ankle in our last TV game. This is Union's first action in the last eight days. They didn't have a weekend game. They didn't have a Monday night game. And that's tipped away. Open for the three. No. Tipped away. Official says give it to Union. Boy, Cartwright really wanted to negotiate that one, but the official says Union ball. Boykin has been held to four in this game. They need to see some production out of him. Vic has not scored. Hawkins has not delivered tonight. Vic trying to get the open shot. And Little Page back to the free throw line. Jeremiah has been in position to be able to deliver from in the paint. And it's done the best he could in a night where there's just not a lot of support from his teammates. And he got it. Four out of six for Jeremiah from the line tonight. And again, he's the only bulldog in double figures. If he gets this one, he'll match Cartwright for the game high of 13 and gets it. So Union on a mild run 
of four points unanswered. But this is where they need yet another stop. You saw Dietrich trying to get an open dash underneath against JT DeBuck. And the foul. And you gotta you gotta know that was frustrating, but it's Little Page committing his second. And that will send to the line. Cartwright. They've had a real battle tonight. Cartwright is six out of ten from the floor. This is his second trip to the free throw line. And does not connect. Cartwright is only a 53% free throw shooter, so you figure he's going to miss at least one of two. Gets the second. So that stops the short flurry of Union, but it gives the Bulldogs a chance for a two-for-one or three-for-one. Little Page. Taking it to the inside, and he overshot it. You could tell he hesitated a bit before he put the bank up, and he banked it too far left. That one hurt if you're a Union fan. And they work against Little Page, and you can see the editorial comments from the Union fans as well as from Dave Niven, but that will be to no avail. Jordovic will check into the game, and Little Page, who has just played a lot of minutes tonight, is taking some time out. You saw some hesitation from Dietrich. On the inside, reverse is there for Cartwright. He has 16. So Union back down by 10 again after closing it down to 7. 4-3. Yes! That's only the second three of the game, and it is the first one from Hunter Vick tonight. And again, playing this deliberate tempo that Mike Neenaber knows works so well for his team particularly if they're not making turnovers. And tonight, they've only given it up seven times. They're working against Jordovich. And he got it with the hook and the foul. And Jordovich commits. So Dujan with his second. And going to the line is Cartwright. And boy, you have to be impressed with this young man. He just is so patient with the basketball, and that's about three times tonight that he's held on to it between 8 and 15 seconds and then been able to deliver. And many times off-balance shots. And misses on the back set. For a guy who shoots so well, it's amazing how rough it is for him on the three-point line. And that one was one that was probably forced by Gidgel trying to go in between two defenders and so Union will get it back underneath trailing by nine Union has not had a lead in this half they've been outscored 15 to 9 here in the second half and traveling yep that was one of those that JT just simply took a step before he moved forward and he got called for it For Union, turnover number 10. And again, you may be seeing a little bit of rust for not being in game action for eight days. I know it's not what Dave Niven would have wanted, but that's the way the schedule was. There was no Saturday game on it. Rimming out for Brooks on the three. Bulldogs with an opportunity to try to close the gap again from the corner. No. Tipped around. Backside. Layup is there. That was all Jordovich saving it for Hunter Vick. And that gets the fans back into it as they've closed it to seven. Lots of time in this one. Demond Franklin getting set to check back in for the Statesman. You got this place coming alive. You can't blame the fans. Here's the steal. And wait a minute. Double dribble is called, and Niven is livid. 
Niven is absolutely furious at that call, and we have another media timeout as Dave has a conversation. Well, in our conversation with Dave Niven about Bo Gidgel, the coach referred to Bo as a teammate's kind of player, and here is why. I think, I think he has good feel. He makes, he makes a lot of good decisions uh, when he's out there. He makes the right pass a lot, um, and he's an unselfish player. Uh, he, he moves the ball um, and, and finds guys, um, you know, particularly in the post early on in the season. There were a lot of times I just told him, look, man, stop passing. You, you need to be looking to score right now. You have one player on you. Uh, if there's only one player on you, you need to score. And uh, but he's he's always looking. He's always looking to, to find guys. And so if you're his teammate. You love playing with a guy that loves to pass. Um, and uh, he, but he he definitely does a lot of a lot of things that are that are difficult to guard, difficult to prepare for. Um, he's made it made a huge impact uh, on our team this year. No, no question. And there they are. I think that guy was, he was in the camera again. I think he was a regular on The Walking Dead. I love it when the student section gets energized, and some of this is coming from the baseball team that (laughs) has, has brought it to the table for fan support in the last two games for the Bulldogs. Boy, that... That is still on the mind of Dave Niven, and he's still giving a glare at that double dribble call on Bo Gidgel. I think everything has possibly been called on Bo that can be called tonight. And inside goes right into the hands of Gidgel, and he's fouled. So Union will play it for Bo That is his third steal of the game. So Union will play it underneath, and again, another opportunity to close this to a two-possession lead. This has been one of these games that has been, trust, trust me, it's been grueling to watch. You just haven't had that huge offensive flurry by either team. Gidgel thought about it. Down to eight on the shot clock. And the buck did not connect, and it doesn't matter because it's going back the other way. And you could tell Jordovich did not like that call at all. So Union gives up another opportunity. Bulldogs still shooting a cool 27% in this game. Delta State has increased to 40 but it has been like an Amana side-by-side with Union shooting tonight as we get to the 11-minute mark. And again, with this deliberate tempo, you're not going to get monster number of possessions. And they're going to go with, they got to go with a desperation. Now, he did not get it off. He did not get it off. They didn't call the 30-second shot violation, but he didn't get that one off. Vic almost loses it. Union with only 15 to navigate. And the foul is charged to Walker Gregg, his second. Now, you do have Brooks with four fouls now for, and he's on the bench. And Brooks is their leading scorer with 15. That is the fourth team foul, and so Boykin will toss it in right by the scorer's table. Gidgel has just not been able to make anything happen tonight. He's going to try here, and the ball will not drop. Bo is 0 for 8 from the floor, and you can see Dave Niven shaking his head below us as if it's just one of those nights. They tried an alley-oop, and that pass was way too high to try to get it inside. 
And the left-hand layup is there for Zordovic, and it is a five-point game now. That was a shot turnover for Delta State, and getting set to check back in is Cotton. They've held him scoreless in this game, and he's averaged 11 on the season. This is a big possession if you're a Union fan. Down to nine on the shot clock, and they threw it away. I think what happened is Cartwright thought somebody was over on the far left wing, and they were not. So Union trying to make a bit of a rally. They've had four unanswered points, but they want to make it six or seven. They're going to try to challenge the paint again. Fall away. It's there. Boykin with his sixth of the game. Now it's a 6-0 run for the Bulldogs. Again, it isn't pretty, but you'll take what you can get. And losing it on the outside. Yes, sir. Unforced error for Dietrich. Turnover number 12 now for Delta State. And Mike Neenaber wants timeout. Nine minutes and two seconds remaining. Union has closed it to within three. Dave Niven will tell you that Delta State is a dual threat type of team. And he told us that's what it makes tough going to decide how to best defend against them. Well, I, I think I think it's a combination of points in the paint and outside shooting. Um, it's hard to take away both of those. Uh, I think I think probably what what is going to be required um, for them to to come in here and beat us is is probably that they've got to be able to make a bunch of threes. And so. Um, to me, if I have to choose between which one of those I'm going to take away, the, the, the three or the, or the, the interior um, scoring, um, I, we're really going to focus and try to, try to take away um, open looks from three as best we can. Well, the Bulldogs have finally awakened at least a bit, and they have a chance to slice this to one or potentially tie the game. We've had six lead changes all in the first half, but Union was just absolutely asleep in the early going. Cowboy curling, there he is again. We need to get him at least in some kind of competition with that mop. Because he runs it just like he's doing curling in the Olympics. Bulldogs now with a big possession that probably would get this crowd erupting if they came away with a three. But I tell you, anybody in the place, including Dave Niven, would take another good two. Union was down 39-30, to and Delta State has had a lead by as much as 13 in this half after leading 24-21 to at halftime. And going for the three is Boykin. Yes! We are tied! That's one of the quickest releases you will ever see. A 9-0 run for the Bulldogs. This is what Dave Niven talked about just a few moments ago, about having multiple stops in a row and how it energizes your offensive team. And a whistle away from the ball. And... DeBuck is called for pushing. So JT commits. Let me see how many he's got in the contest. That is his first foul. Each team has four team personals in this half. Almost a five-second violation. It goes off the hands of Cartwright. Again, excellent inbound defense on the part of the Bulldogs. And now they're playing with a bit of a mission. They've had to climb this ladder since about eight minutes remaining in the first half. A chance to finally go ahead. The quick release again is short. And that's going to be an over-the-back violation. I think it's going to be on Little Page. Yep. Jeremiah committing his third. 
Tyree had a good look at it, but just simply could not make it fall. Union tonight, again, looking at the board, three out of 17 in three-pointers. They'll get Jeremiah back out, and Jordovich will come back in at the post. Gidgel is in there playing with three fouls himself as we're under eight minutes. They got the room on the inside, and no! Offensive foul charged to Cartwright. That is only his first in the contest, but Union is playing with a passion right now. And timeout is called. Seven minutes, 53 seconds remaining, and we are all deadlocked at 39. Well, the Bulldogs are well into their second time around with all of their Gulf South Conference opponents. And Dave Niven says that the statesman's post player, Cartwright, is one of the toughest to defend in the entire league. Um, which means there's, there's going to be more possessions of, of one-on-one down, down there in the post. And, uh, and, and I think they've got post guys that are really difficult, probably the most difficult guy to, to guard uh, in, in there in our league, in, in Cartwright. And, uh, um, you know, he, he's had some really big games against us in the past. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, if I got to give something up, I'd rather give up a two than a three. And um, I think if you let them make, uh, you know, they've had games where they've made in the high teens from threes uh, and, and they don't lose those games. And so we've got to limit that. I think if we can limit them, you know, to five or six makes in a game, that's great for us. Um, even if Cartwright's having a big game, I, I, I take that. Um, we just got to limit limit the, the, the open looks that they get from three uh, as best we can. Union has picked up 11 points off of Delta State turnovers in the game. This would be an opportunity to make that 13 or 14. And that is a huge key down the stretch. Again, as Dave Niven talked about, the defensive stops have to convert into points. He's given you so many insights into the game during the course of this season, and I appreciate both him and Mark Campbell taking their time to do that for us. Gidgel with two defenders on him. Parks. Yes! A little delay from Ty, and he has seven, and the Bulldogs lead it for the first time this half. 41-39. to 39. It's an 11-0 run. Delta State has to regroup. This Bulldog defense has been tenacious in the last five minutes. Big three. Yes! That's how you answer it. That is Cotton's first three of the game. He averages 11. And we've got an eighth lead change in the game as Delta State reclaims it. Almost stolen, it is. And let's see what happens. They're going to give it back to Union. And checking back in is Hunter Vick. Union's going to spread them out on the inbounds play. Taking it all the way down, way too high, but the foul is called. That was way too high off the glass, but that was because... No, they're not going to call a foul off of that. They say that the ball went over the top of the glass. And so... Union gives it up for the 13th time. And after getting that two-point lead and 11 unanswered points, now it's Delta State trying to get on a run of its own. Trying to go into the paint. And they do, and the foul. And it looks as though that is going to be on Jordovich. They say he pushed off. So a brand new 20 with 621 to go for the Statesman. Appreciate our crew tonight doing a brilliant job of bringing you all of these pictures. 
I tell you what, he's going to try the three anyway, and it's iron unkind, and it is an offensive rebound for Dietrich. And the third opportunity is not there. Union a chance to retake it. It would be the ninth lead change. And inside it goes. And it's Union's ball. The foul is charged to Dietrich, and that is his second. That is the sixth team foul for Delta State. Each team will be in the bonus with the next foul committed. Almost stolen, and Gidgel has to hurry. They got numbers now. And open. It is Hunter Vick. Yes! Vick with eight. He was silent in the first half. Ninth lead change. Bulldogs back on top by two. This is the kind of game you usually have when Mike Neenaber is in the house. It's just the way it always turns out. Oh, let's see. They did not call a foul, and they're going to call one on the backside. And you can tell the fans did not like that one. The foul is charged to Hunter Vick. They wanted an offensive foul. It looked like an elbow to the throat. And they give him the basket as well, so it's all tied at 44. And a three-point opportunity here for Cartwright, who has 18. And you're going to hear the noise. Nope. Gidgel the rebound. Bo with six rebounds, still with only one point. You wonder at what stage of this game is he going to be able to unleash. He has missed all eight of his shots from the floor. Tipped. Just no authority on that pass whatsoever. Tied at 44. Five minutes remaining. Beautiful move, spin move on the part of Brooks, who's playing with four fouls, and it is Zordovic who commits the foul. That is his third. And that was a perfectly timed fake for him to go inside past Zordovic. Brooks to the line. And again, as we say, he's playing with four fouls. Chance to go back for a three-point lead. He got it right through the heart. Chance of defense again coming from all over the house. Under five minutes to go. It is Boykin. No. Too far left. Probably needed to wait a little bit longer to get that opportunity because you don't want, as Dave Niven calls, a shot turnover. Whistle away from the ball. Which way? Are they going to call that on Gidgel? It appears that they are. And that will be Bo's fourth. And that's the ninth team foul on Union. It's a one-in-one situation for Dietrich. He's a 71% free throw shooter. Missed the first in. Gidgel staying in there with four fouls. Big three. No. Too far right for DeBuck. They will get Ty Parks back into the game. Again, Union needed a little bit more deliberation before going for the big bomb. Wide open underneath. All of a sudden, three Bulldogs showed up. The gray shirts began to converge. Down to five on the shot clock. Fall away three. Yes, sir. No doubt for Brooks. He has 14, and timeout is called by Mike Neenaber. That's his second. And they have regained a six-point advantage at 50 to 44. Well, one talent for this edition of the Union Bulldogs is playing well in the clutch. 
And Dave Niven told us that's been a big boost for the confidence of his players. Like I said, we've won a lot of close games this year. And so our, our players, I think, uh, really have a belief that, uh, that, that a number of them can make plays. Um, and, we, and we've got, we've got different guys, um, which is, is a blessing. Um, we've got a number of guys that we can, that we can go to for, for a big shot, uh, uh, you know, the last play of the game. Um, you know, I, I think, and we've done that in different games, different games, it's been different guys. Um, and so I think that's, that's, uh, certainly a benefit for us. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, it, it does build confidence. Uh, these guys, the more you do it, um, the more you believe it's going to happen again. And... Well, this is one where the Bulldogs are going to have to do it in the clutch. After gaining the lead at 44 to 42, they have given up eight in a row to Delta State. Union went on an 11 point run to gain the lead 44 to 42, and then it's been eight straight for the Statesmen since then. Mike Needaber teams rarely ever get into a panic when they give up that kind of run because, as he says and so many coaches say, the good teams are going to make a run on you. Now the question is, do the Bulldogs have another one left in them? They have had a tough night from behind the arc, four out of 20. But you got to believe at some point they're going to need to get a couple more. Gidgel with two defenders on him. Gets it. That is the first field goal of the game for Bo Gidgel. Mike Neenaber with only one timeout remaining. Dave Niven has three. He was open for a possibility of a three. Bulldogs need a big stop here. Seven on the shot clock. Underneath. What a play by Brooks. He has 16. Again, that patience that you see underneath by this Delta State team. Hunter Vick takes it all the way down and gets it. Back down to a four-point margin. Vick with 10. And again, chance of defense all over the house. Delta State, 8 and 12 on the season, trying to knock off the top team in the conference. And the foul is charged to Jordovich, and it goes, and it's a chance for a three possession lead. And Jordovich will come back out and Little Page back in. 2.23 to go with Cartwright on the line. He's 2 of 5 tonight. 22 points in the game. Right through the heart. And that's a guy who is not a very good free throw shooter. 53% on the season, but in the clutch, he delivers. Driving all the way down, Little Page. Perfect lane. The question is, is there enough time for the Bulldogs to make another comeback? 55 to 50. Little Page with 15 tonight. And the foul is charged to Little Page. That is his fourth. And frankly, it looked as though from our vantage point that Brooks was leading with his arm. But instead, Brooks will go to the line for two because that is the 10th team foul on the Bulldogs. And he is their leading free throw shooter at 81%. Right there, you know in the clutch he's going to deliver. Brooks with 17 and playing with four fouls for a lot of this second half. (laughs) 
Did not connect. It's Gidgel high for the rebound. And that was a big one because it's still a two-possession game. Gidgel thought about the three. This time it is Parks. He would not take it. Vic. Yes. Dave Niven takes time out. We're going to keep it right here. 56 to 52. And this has been one of the most defensive struggles that you will see. Both these games have been, in case you didn't tune in earlier. Lady Bulldogs remained undefeated in the Gulf South after trailing by one at halftime, put on a big offensive and defensive splurge in the second half and defeated Delta State 60-47. to They're 13-0 in the Gulf South Conference. Dave Niven, you got to know he's preaching what he said to us in one of the earlier snippets tonight that this has to be where we have to get a stop. When they went on the 11-0 run, they had approximately six stops in a row. And Dave Niven is still arguing the point about why his team has not gotten the benefit of some offensive fouls down at the opposite end. Union's going to press. They're keeping everybody up front. The question is, how long will Delta State hold on to this before going for the shot. They got 15 on the shot clock. And if you're Union, you really know this has to be the one where you've got to make a stop. Down to five. And it's Brooks. They may not, they will not get it off. 65 seconds remaining. The Bulldogs with an opportunity. And it is Vic to toss it in. Dave Niven is directing the traffic. One minute remaining. Boykin with a big three. No, no, but it is. Little Page could not make it fall. Gidgel underneath and the foul. That was sheer determination. Two offensive rebounds, and Gidgel finally made it drop. Bo with only five points in the game. And let's see what he can deliver here from the line. They desperately need a three-point play. And that is the fifth foul on... Brooks. So Aaron Brooks has left the game. He delivers a one point Delta State lead with 47 seconds remaining. And Union again with a modified press. You saw what happened the last time. They could not get a shot off within 30 seconds. 15 on the shot clock. This is big. Barney Fife would say it. Seven on the shot clock. Four. Trying to work it inside. Fall away. It's there. What an off-balance bank by Cartwright. Union with one chance to try to get this into, and they're going to take it all the way down and not get it. And they got a foul. They opted to try to go inside for the single basket. And instead, it did not drop. And so it is going to be a two-shot opportunity at the opposite basket. And it is Mentor on the line. He has not been there tonight. Even one of these will probably... Put it on ice for Delta State, and it's not there. And Union calls timeout. We'll keep it here. 
Nine seconds remaining. This is what you call absolute desperation for the Bulldogs. And Dave Niven obviously is going to draw up a play for his team in case this second free throw is missed. Delta State 7 of 14 from the line tonight. But the Bulldogs cannot afford to take it inside and go for a two this time. They've got to go all the way and set it up for a three. This has been one of those where the Bulldogs had to scratch and claw and go on an 11-0 run to gain the lead 44-42, and then they gave up eight in a row. And there they are. They've done their part tonight. They have given all of the possible encouragement to the Bulldogs this evening. But... This is where you simply say on this free throw, this is it. Because it would be almost, unless Union could get down and lay down a three within four seconds, it would almost be impossible for them to make a comeback. As they strike up the land of a thousand dances. Well, the land of a thousand free throws, and this is one that Delta State is hoping Minner delivers and Union is hoping that the mailman is not at home. We'll watch this one with you, mentor potentially to salt away the game. No! Bulldogs with one chance. Boykin, he lost it. That's it. Game, set, match. Boykin was in a huge hurry to get down to try to get open for a three, and he was the guy that you wanted to have it in your hands and just simply dribbled right into the hands of Delta State, and they have knocked off the number one team in the Gulf South Conference, 58 to 55 and as we say this was a grueling matchup from top to bottom both of them were tonight Lady Bulldogs winning 60 to 47 but as you saw anytime Mike Neenaber comes to Jackson Tennessee there's going to be trouble (laughs) and I mean that in the most complimentary kind of way because in his years at Bethel his years at Christian Brothers he could come in here with a team that has this kind of record, now 9-12 and 12 on the season, and pull one off. And again, he has. Delta State winning it 59-56 to 56 as the Bulldogs could not get off a shot with nine seconds remaining and trying to wrap it up. Well, let's wrap it up from here and give you the totals for tonight's game. Delta State finally got its shooting percentage up that was pretty horrendous at halftime. 45% from the floor. Union, 35%. The Bulldogs were only at 24% at halftime. Three-pointers, Delta State. This this was the bad part for both teams tonight. Delta State, 5 out of 21 for 24%. But for Union, only 19%. From behind the arc, four out of 21, and it was just one of those that you feel like you're in an Alfred Hitchcock movie when uh, those threes were just not dropping tonight. Delta State wins it despite only shooting 47% from the free throw line. Union was seven out of 10 for 70%, but the problem was Union could not get to the free throw line enough. Little Page was five out of seven and Gidgel was two out of three, nobody else was able to get to the line. And that's because there were so few fouls called in this game, only 31 all told. And in the first half, nobody got in the bonus. The second half, it was Delta State getting there late, but Union could not get itself in a bonus situation. So uh, that's the way the rebounding goes tonight. It was Union getting the edge 43-34, to getting 16 offensive rebounds to only six for Delta State, but that means they weren't converting. 
you get those offensive boards, you've got to be able to get the baskets to fall afterward, and it just didn't happen. And turnovers, even though you had those mistakes toward the end, Delta State made more turnovers, 16 to Union's 15. And Union picked up 16 points off turnovers to only seven for Delta State. And you figure with that kind of margin off turnovers, you're going to win. But it doesn't happen when you're shooting that week behind the arc at four out of 21. It was just a tough night. The toughest night really was Bo Gidgel because even though he contributed some toward the end, uh, he missed his first eight shots from the floor, and it was just a very, very difficult night for him. He missed all four of his three-pointers. He did come through with ten rebounds, uh, but only six points on the night, and just could not. It, it, it's one of those nights that you could just picture about every possible thing that could go wrong to Bo. Uh, he committed four fouls, six turnovers. A couple of those fouls were sort of iffy, but... You can't look back on those at all. Made four steals in the game, uh, and had a couple of assists. And as I say, ten rebounds. But Union just was not converting as a whole this evening. So let me run down your scoring. Uh, For Delta State, it was Aaron Brooks with 17 points. He was 6 of 11 from the floor, 3 of 7 in three-pointers. And he came through in the clutch with a big, big free throw, 17 points he wound up with. Our Worthy Worthy Road Studios player of the game, and really no surprise because he's the kind that delivered all night long, was Malik Cartwright. 25 points to lead the game. He was 11 of 16 in field goals and had some beautiful drives in the game, particularly down the stretch. Uh, three of six in free throws and added seven rebounds to it, and so had two block shots that were very crucial. So Cartwright is going to be our player of the game for Worthy Road Studios tonight. For Union, they could only get two players in double figures. Jeremiah Littlepage had himself a solid game, even though he was only 5 of 14 in field goal shooting. He sat down a good bit of the second half with his third foul, came back in late, committed a fourth one, but he also contributed nine rebounds in the game. And you can't fault him from the free throw line. Five out of seven, he shot above his season average and ended up uh, with 15 points to lead the Bulldogs. Hunter Vick was held scoreless in the first half, came through with two three-pointers in the second half, was five of six overall from the field, 12 points and 8 rebounds on the game. So Hunter played himself particularly a solid second half. But you just couldn't get enough support from everywhere else. Tyree Boykin was held scoreless in the first half, ended up with 9 in the game, but was only 1 of 6 in 3-pointers. And one would only know what might have been had he been able to get off a shot there at the end and have a chance for a tie in the game. But uh, unfortunately, it just ended up as a turnover. But uh, Ty just had, uh, tonight was just again where they shut him down uh, and ended up one out of six from behind the arc. Uh, Seven points for Ty Parks, three out of nine from the floor tonight. And then Bo Gidgel, as we mentioned, uh, he was two out of ten, missed all of his uh, three-pointers. And he did have 10 rebounds and six points in the game. So Union drops one, and it was one that hurts at this stage of the game because the Bulldogs are falling now to 18-5 and five on the season, and they are 12-3 and three in the Gulf South. And depending on what West Alabama has done tonight, and I don't know whether we can check this before we go off the air this evening, I'm going to try to see if I can get a score on their game. Uh, and so... This is what happens when you're on live television. Uh, You try to go to your computer to see if you can find out what is going on at that end because that is really uh, the key outcome here in this one. And so let me go here, and I will tell you momentarily. And let's see what we have on the ledger for them. And... Let's see. They played, well, they don't play tonight. They played, well, I went through all that, and they played last night at Shorter, uh, and they defeated Shorter 73-67. to So the Bulldogs were go- are going to hang on to a half-game lead. 
They are 12 and 3, West Alabama 11 and 3. So the Bulldogs will hang on to the lead in the Gulf South Conference race coming into Saturday's game against Mississippi College that will come in 2 and 11 and 4 and 15 overall, but you can't take anybody lightly coming down the stretch. Just as a quick wrap up on the Lady Bulldogs game, 60 to 47, Lady Bulldogs Doing it again, 13-0, and and it's their 15th straight win overall, 18-2 and on the season for the Lady Bulldogs that are ranked number seven in the nation. And it has been, they, they have found a way to do it when they've had to scratch and claw, and as I mentioned, it was old school defensive basketball in that game. It was not pretty if you wanted to watch uh, a lot of transition baskets up and down the floor, but it just didn't happen. So Lady Bulldogs will take on Mississippi College that they defeated earlier in the season, 83-75. to But don't expect this to be a cakewalk by any stretch of the imagination because MC is 7-7 seven and seven on the season coming into tonight and 12-9 and nine overall. And you got to believe, the Union has a target on their back. The Lady Bulldogs are going to be chased by everybody who comes in here. And that includes Mississippi College. So we'll be here with that starting at 1.30 on Saturday afternoon right here on E Plus TV 6, on the World Wide Web on EPlusTV6.com or on UUAthletics.com. Or if you have a Roku TV set or a Roku player, download the free to view app. Free, the number two, and view. Free to view app, and you can get us around the clock and we hope you'll do that just in case uh, that you want to do that on roku so that wraps it up we are splitting a double header tonight but uh the lady bulldogs still undefeated in the conference and the bulldogs despite the loss are still a half game up in the gulf south conference race and still trying to hang on to that number one seed in the conference as we approach tournament time on march 1st so It's time for us to show you the good people who have brought you this broadcast tonight from Worthy Road Studios, and I'll be very happy for that to happen because I like working with these guys immensely. They are a really talented group of people, and we appreciate them greatly. Uh, And just remember, our our airtime 130 on Saturday, uh, we'll have the pregame show with Mark Campbell, and then at 145, we'll be live here on the floor. And our cameras tonight, Billy Bolin, Jamie Janda, and Andrew Burris. And both of your games were directed by Christopher Reasons and, of course, our ever-cool, ever-present executive producer, Paul Schultze. I'm Steve Beverly, and until Saturday afternoon at 1.30, come back to see us every chance you get, and so long from the great hub city of West Tennessee.